from the 37th parallel on America's haunted highway, it's Pixelated Paranormal, your guide to the unusual and the strange. What's up, everybody? Happy 2021, and welcome to episode 176, Pixelated Paranormal, the exciting conclusion to our holiday Q&A. And again, thank you guys all so much for sending in questions. We were completely overwhelmed, and that is why this is the third part of us answering the questions. Isn't that nuts? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. We have such a good community. Yeah, super stoked about that. Super stoked. So we're going to skip... News. I don't really care how you guys are doing. I'm not going to ask you this time around. Me neither. Mm-hmm. Fuck you, too. We're going to get into it. <laughs> Happy New Year, bitch. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No shit. 2021. No complaints. Yeah. Okay. So getting back into it, my brother actually asks, how about what's the weirdest thing you've ever encountered that can't be explained? Preston, you want to go first? Sure. I mean, any paranormal experience that I've encountered, I would think that falls under that category because, um, I mean, the science behind it, we don't know 100% what's going on. I don't think there's one thing that's like the weirdest. I think everything that has happened to me paranormally um, Mm -hmm. has been pretty crazy. So, I mean, I don't have a clear winner on that. I didn't notice you wore your dancing shoes and just danced all the way around that question. I, I'm still waiting for like <laughs> I'm still wait I'm still waiting for the Dan Aykroyd thing to happen where you know I get you blown just go by full fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah, you know <laughs> you're wait when you're on the phone with Britney Spears you see the Men in Black is that what you're waiting for? No, no, no. I'm talking like <laughs> Ghostbusters when he's having uh, when he's in the bedroom and you know he gets blown by a ghost. Like to me, that's roll back, like, man. Oh, yeah, that's what you meant by the yeah. Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. <laughs> getting a Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. So <laughs> when I like, get the Dan Aykroyd, uh, I'll be able to fully answer your question, Kevin. So we, Okay. That's odd. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Steve, let me go real quick. I'll do mine. Cool. Kev, the one thing that I have a hard time explaining, I mean, kind of like Preston, that's actually a good answer, dude, because all this stuff you can't really explain. Um, the weirdest thing that I remember happening that I can't explain, and it's a little bit more non-paranormal maybe, is – I remember once waking up, I had to have been like eight or nine maybe, and I remember waking up sitting cross-legged, perpendicular on my bed, staring out the doorway into the basement. And Kevin and I's rooms um, were actually, we had a wall between our bedrooms and a door that, you know, went between the rooms, but then we also each had our separate doors that led out to the basement. I probably said that earlier when I talked about the uh, the weird footsteps that night. Mm. But anyway, I remember waking up one night. Um, I don't know what time it was. I didn't have an alarm clock um, in my bedroom, uh, probably summertime. But I remember waking up or coming to just sitting cross-legged on my bed, just staring out the doorway into the darkness. And I remember like kind of realizing like, oh, oh, I'm awake. What am I doing? Oh, I'm sitting up. Weird. And then I remember like just thinking, oh, well, and I leaned back. And of course, sitting perpendicular on my bed, I fell off. I did like a backward somersault off my bed, um, fell off. Both my knees went into the wall. It was really kind of painful and uncomfortable. Mm. And I freaked out, stood up, like tripped over my bed, stumbled over, turned the light on. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? This doesn't make any sense. And then the weird part that I can't explain is as a child, I never made my bed hardly ever. Uh, my bed was perfectly made. Like, made a little bit better than I can make it, maybe. Like, the blankets were pulled nice and tight. Um, the pillow was under the blanket, and it was folded kind of around the pillow, like someone tucked in around the pillow. Super bizarre. But, yeah, that's that's the one thing I can't really explain. I don't remember if I ever told you that, or you remember that, or maybe you were at somebody's house that night, and I was by myself, but... Yeah, that's the thing I can't uh, I can't really explain that happened right next door to your bedroom. <laughs> your little brother's haunted, bro. <laughs> Ain't that the fucking truth? Sucking yeah, shit. Steve, what do you got, man? <laughs> <laughs> so first off, Kevin, great name because it's still fresh in everybody's heads from Home Alone all this season. So, <laughs> Kevin, um, my answer is definitely going to be uh, brought up a couple times tonight in tonight's episode. So trigger warning to anybody out there that has dealt with uh, car wrecks, any kind of trauma in that regard. Uh, a couple of my answers is going to be involved with my car my car wreck uh, 
experience. So um, it might get kind of graphic, kind of uneasy. So just fair warning. Um, so mine is definitely the weirdest thing that you encountered. It can't be explained. When I ride in a vehicle, I always wear my seatbelt. Very rarely do I not wear my seatbelt. <clears throat> the only times that I don't, I'm usually always driving, so it's always easy for me to wear mine. Uh, when I ride in a passenger seat of people's cars, sometimes I forget, and I don't know, I don't know why. You know what I mean? And then like I got like really, really, really good of always wearing my seatbelt. While we were going to the Warp Tour, I wanted to, you know, kind of like lean over, so I took my seatbelt off. Well, that day we mm-hmm. got into a wreck. Um, we flip. You know, yeah, fuck, I always remember seven and a half, eight and a half times, something like that. Uh, going to oncoming traffic, barely miss a semi. When the car flips, I'm partially ejected out of the sunroof. My arm um, up of my upper bicep until my shoulder is pinned underneath the car of the sunroof. And like the sunroof's obviously blown out. And then my car is underneath what was mangled steel and like the the sunroof window. And that's where my arm was trapped. So the rest of my body, I can move. If I would have been wearing my seatbelt, my head would have been where my arm was. Jesus, would have been dead. yeah. Like, my head would have been exploded. Yeah. So that's probably the weirdest thing. Like, why did that time? Because I've slept in cars with my seatbelt all the time. But for some mm-hmm. reason, and that Lincoln, because <laughs> it's so fucking boaty, kind of like Gillum's car, I don't, mm-hmm. I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to lounge out. Uh, and then since that wreck, I've gotten better about putting my seatbelt onto the passenger seat. If I'm in the back seat, always instant. It's something about mm-hmm. the passenger seat that like, I don't have weird. that instant. It's so weird. I get a driver's seat of any vehicle, the, the, the work van, my car, friend's car, whatever instant seatbelt. But if I get in that passenger seat. Like, Gillen would attest to this. Like, in his car, put your fucking seatbelt on. Because, like, I just, mm-hmm, sometimes mm-hmm. I remember, sometimes I don't. It's just really strange. But, like, that one time, it would have been, it, it, it would have been done. It's just, it's just weird. So, wow. there's my, there's my answer. That's a good one, man. I, uh, I don't know that I, I mean, you've told me that fact before, but that's a fact I always forget about. I, uh, I still remember. God, I get goosebumps and my eyes start watering. I remember this. Um, I remember being at work at Pizza Hut because the other half of our just weird circle of friends, because <laughs> we had these clusters that always kind of, you know, overlap each yeah. other. Yeah. Um, and then later in life, we just uh, all one. We're all one. Together we are. <laughs> um, but I remember being at work and um, those of us that didn't go to Warp Tour, I remember getting the phone call and they're like, um, Oh my God, you know, David and, well, Davey, we called him Davey. Davey and Steven and Hunter got in a car wreck and like we didn't know anything. And Jared and Garrett. Cause that's kind of. Can't forget them. Yeah, Jared. <laughs> and that's, that's kind of like back when cell phones, uh, cell phones were big, but what year was that, Steve? Oh, 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 five. Cause it was the oh, year five. after I graduated. Okay. So I mean, yeah, cell phones were pretty popular, but I mean, they weren't. Not, yeah, not for popular. us. We all had like the cricket and they were like, only certain <laughs> cell phone areas. <laughs> like I don't think like they were working when we were kind of in the boonie areas. Yeah, when you when you were between Wichita and Kansas City, yeah, good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> Especially in the Flint Hills. You might be able to play Snake. Yeah. Kids, if you don't know what Snake is, <laughs> look up Nokia Snake game on Google. Oh Jesus, that's a good one. God we're well, <laughs> let's shift gears here. Isaac's second question is Isaac. if you could do a Harry and a Henderson oh, with Bigfoot. First Would off, you ever first do the off, scene? <laughs> what a great movie. Like, an incredible oh, movie made it an incredible time of all of our lives, uh-huh. and it still holds up to this day. Yep. And John Lithgow is a fucking national treasure. <laughs> like, <okay. laughs> Isn't he? Yes. I've actually Everything got, um, that he's I don't know in is amazing. This. Yeah, Steve, I think you probably remember uh, a couple years ago at Horror Fest, I ducked out and ran over to Lucinda's, which is like a little like um kind of a cool little mm-hmm. boutique here. It's yeah, like, that place cool, is dope. Like, you know, I only go in there with and you and Shayla. That's it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, I'm they not had a go random in. basket. <laughs> yeah, they had a random basket of just uh, trading cards, unopened trading oh, cards. Oh yeah, I remember that by yeah. the register, and I've got a package of Harry and the Henderson trading cards from like nineteen eighty-seven or eighty-eight. Oh yeah, for sure, dude. The uh, the I, I still have the bubble that. gum. They had a, it had a piece of bubble gum in I'll it. I'll eat it. Ew, God no! It's it's sitting. Wait, hold on. Uh, I'll eat it for a Patreon. 
<laughs> I will tell Mark. Give them donate a dollar <laughs> to add that. I got three pieces, man. If we get a certain donation, I you will got three you pieces. Piece. Holy shit, that'd be hilarious. Well, yeah, because it was it was broken into two pieces when I opened the cards, and then um, the other day Shayla came in and I showed it to her, and she's like, "Huh?" And she snapped it in half. You heard like, it here. Oh, <laughs> all the, all, you know, you know what's gonna happen. All the Masons peoples are gonna come together and fucking get, get us to do that yeah. shit. Jeez, we should do a, do an auction, do a raffle. <laughs> so the, there was a there was a guy on uh, YouTube that was um, opening up boxes of the uh, garbage pail kid card mm-hmm. set mm-hmm. because they the, there was like one card in every pack or like every two <laughs> packs that made like a flip book, and he always wanted the, fl- the flip book. So he found like a bunch of auctions and bought like four or five boxes and like every other oh, pack of cards that he from. opened had, yeah. <laughs> had the stick of gum in it. And he's like, the gum is like 30 years old. This doesn't even look safe. And then like, he's just sitting there putting every single piece of gum in his mouth. Oh my and God. Gross. Yeah. He was like, dude, this is fucking disgusting. I think I'm going to die. So I'm not well, sure I don't it's, think a, we'll sure it's a wise decision, Steve, oh, but I'm hell? all for watching you do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So Isaac's question, speaking of Harry and the Hendersons, if you could do a Harry and the Hendersons with a Bigfoot, would you ever do the scene where you drive him off into the woods for his own good? Or would you go off into the woods with him and become a little Bigfoot? What are you going to do? Not shave? <laughs> He's gonna be a feral man, dude. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna fucking evolve into a real Bigfoot. You're just gonna yeah, be a, but you're I mean, just gonna be a naked man hanging out with hairy people. Yeah, <laughs> all good. That's creepy. All good, dude. I'll go first on this and say that uh, I would go out into the woods with my dick swinging with Bigfoot and have you know little foot Bigfoot adventures. So <laughs> <laughs> this is really freeing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like in the movie, you know, yeah. what, a, what a beautiful shot because like as a kid watching that movie, yeah. you're like, oh, it's so nice. And then like he walks out and in this, in this time in my head as a kid, like I'm like, oh my God, like there's obviously only one Bigfoot, just mm-hmm. the classic tale of him walking through the, the forest, one. you know what I mean? The one. And then uh-huh. you walk out and then the shot is so cool because they're blended into the trees in the forest. Like yeah. that's why they're so hard oh, to find. Man. And then it walks out and then, then right at the end, that little one walks out and you're like, oh yeah, there's a baby. It's so And cool. see, that would be me. Yeah. I'd be the little foot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so, so cool. Yeah. I would I mean, definitely I'm, have I'm, the reunion for I'm, the woods. I'm naturally yeah. hairy, so it's not like I'd have to really let myself go. Like yeah, that, <laughs> he's got to take your clothes. He's off, got buddy. that gut, that yeah. fucking steel gut. Yeah, fit right, fit right in with. <laughs> what, a, what a polite put down. A, I don't mean that. We know, <laughs> Preston. You'd have to get used to shitting in the woods, though, man. Yeah, it's that's true. fine. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. cool. <laughs> so there's I back too. there's I back would, story. Uh, I'm not putting Preston down. To all the listeners out there, there's back story to that. Preston has a very In, Preston has hard abs. There you go, hard rock saw ab. ab. It's one. Oh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna have to correct you there because I don't, don't imagine a six pack. Like I have like a like a Buddha belly. Like if a beer belly and a Buddha belly had a baby, that's what might called be- a keg. Preston, but yeah, instead, you've got a keg. It's not the Ten Commandments. It's just the Five Commandments on one stone. Just right yeah. on his fucking belly. Yeah. It's rock hard. It's crazy. The first mm. time I touched it, I was like, Jesus. You can fucking, yeah, you yeah. can like sharpen a fucking knife on this thing. <laughs> Gross. Yeah. Gross. It takes talent. Hey, we're not body you know? shaming here. Yeah, it takes talent yeah. to, to grow one like that. <laughs> yeah, no shit. It's awesome. It's like, it's like your very own bonsai tree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh shit! I would, uh, I would too. I would go with Bigfoot Isaac. I would go out there and just uh, see what it's all about, man. I, I mean, like cool. Isaac, come on, bro. Like, what, what kind of question is this? Are you want to be like, nah, dude? I'd take him back, sell tickets to see this motherfucker. <laughs> I want some money. <laughs> of course, we're gonna let him go because we want all the other people to try to have a crack at finding yep. him, not hit him with a dope oh, ass man. station wagon. <laughs> Uh, coincidentally, um, Isaac, you had sent that question in, and I was typing up the stock and putting the questions around. And I had just gone on to, um, I want to say it was Instagram, and our buddy Baba Drock put on the quote um, from Harry and the Hendersons. You've got to go back where you belong now. You've got to go. The floor. Harry, please, please, there's no time. No, 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 don't worry about us. We'll be all right. Can't you see we don't want you anymore? Why can't you go back where you came from? Leave us alone! Oh, 
That's so sad. Yeah. It's, oh, damn, it's still I want to watch that movie up, man. now, man. It's such a good movie. Do it. I need to get it on Blu-ray. I got it on Blu-ray, Voodoo. I got that shit on my phone. No, I'm sorry. Jesus. You need to get a Harry Ann Henderson's <laughs> tattoo, <laughs> man. Could you imagine? <laughs> uh, my buddy Brian. Brian F. He's done one. At Addictions in Ink. He did one not too long ago. Wow, yeah. Dope. Moving along here. <sighs> Shayla, my wife, wants to know... Could the monoliths be alien intelligence telling us they are already here on Earth, or could it be governmental? I'm going to have to go with neither just because, like, there's no scientific data backing up, like, how old they are, what they're made out of. Mm -hmm. And so until you get that, um, you're going to have to go with that it's just like, you know, like an artistic prank that, you know, Mm -hmm. somebody's doing. The only one to me that that I literally just had this conversation today. The only one to me that felt <clears throat> real to me was the the first one, that one in Utah or whatever that popped up. Is that where it was? Mm-hmm. In between them, like rocks and that weird place, like that to me is the only one that questions anything. Once the other one started popping up, all of a sudden, it's just it's too mm-hmm. coincidental, dude. You know it's kind of like Banksy and Banksy impersonators. Yeah. like you've got an artist yeah, who makes a thing, exactly. and everybody jumps on board yeah. to be a part of or it. Or when like they do, yeah. uh, when that one chick did that one art performance piece where it's like she lays out a table, you can do anything you want, and then mm-hmm. more people started doing that, and then it got way too crazy, and then they were like they outlawed it and shit in certain places because mm-hmm. it's just, just getting too nuts. Right. But so I don't know, I. I I want to believe on that on that type of shit because I think that stuff's cool. It looked awesome. I wish it would have stayed there. Um, but like, yeah. But let, let, let's switch the question up a little bit, Shayla. Let's like, do you guys already think that there's uh, alien intelligence already here on Earth? Like, are gosh, or like, are they here and are they mm-hmm. actively like leaving clues in the, in the wide open that we don't see? That'd be kind of cool. Well, I think I I think for sure, man. I I definitely want to believe. I think in my heart of hearts that if there would be aliens, yeah, there's there's got to be some kind of settlement already, some kind of um, yeah institution. You know, they're already here now. We talked about the monoliths back on episode one seventy one seventy one. Um, what we found out, and I don't think she and I talked about it, is um, most likely the first monolith, and maybe some of the others were actual um, installation pieces, art pieces that were made by John McCracken, who was a minimalist sculptor um, who loved science fiction. So, excuse me, he made these monoliths to kind of uh, mimic something from uh, 2001 Space Odyssey. So that's what I really think it is. Um, I want to think that if it was something extraterrestrial, it would have been driven in the ground a lot deeper and those... uh, you know, near dwellers who came up and, uh, you know, knocked this thing up out of the ground and carted it off in their wagon, uh, they wouldn't have been able to remove it so easily. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, unfortunately. Oh, who knows, man? It's probably in somebody's garage or somebody's garden in the backyard. That's so crazy. Yeah, I know. Um, now, oddly enough, in San Francisco, a gingerbread monolith yeah, was I saw discovered. That, I saw that this morning. It was fucking tight. <laughs> that has to be alien. Oh, Preston, totally. what do you think, man? Aliens, are they still here? Are they have they been here? I think they've been here. So if we go back and just throughout history look at archaeological sites where like Puno Punko would be like the number one example for me because mm-hmm. the stones that they used, um, I believe so, you know, don't quote me a hundred percent. Um <laughs> I, I believe that they've never been a show about the facts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe that they were uh, made from like diorite. Which is one of the hardest stones to be able to cut. And one of the worst sodas of all time. Yeah. Diet right? Oof. Diet right. <laughs> no shit. I, I like diet soda. <laughs> that shit's nasty. Yeah. If you, if you look at those stones and how they, like, they were laid out, they had like um, like relief cuts. So it was almost like you would have a, a stone that was shaped like an H. And there would be another stone laid on top of that, like coming out. And then like another stone on top of that coming out. Dude, so you get lightsabers. <laughs> Yeah, you had this very nice, like, three-dimensional look to them. And then the way the, you you put them together, they were almost like Lego Lego blocks. So the, the top stone had, like, a little nub, and it fit into a, a hole into the bottom stone. And they're so well-fitted that you can't even fit, like, a piece of paper or a playing card in between the seams. And so to get the stones, mm-hmm. like, the shape that they were, 
you know, modern day archaeologists will, you know, uh, they just had like a stone cutting technique we haven't discovered yet. But then you'll have other theorists that will say, no, these stones were melted. It looks like they had a way of actually shaping and melting the stones as they were putting them into place. You go back four, five, six, seven thousand years. Okay. People in loincloth, Ooga Booga cavemen didn't have that technology to do that. So then how do these sites exist? And then, you know, all the crazy theories that are out there about crustal displacement and then how that pushes man's timeline even further back. So modern history will tell you 10,000 years ago, we were still cavemen, but then now we're finding archaeological sites that show that we had civilization you know, advanced civilization, um, 10,000, 15,000, whatever it is, you know, so many years ago that that shouldn't exist. So clearly Mm -hmm. that would be like a starting point for maybe aliens. I'm not saying aliens, but probably aliens. Dude, you live (laughs) and breathe this ancient alien shit, dude. I love that about you. (laughs) Fucking love it. What a fucking nerd. I know, yeah. dude. I love it. He's a nerd for that hey, shit. Hey, why don't you go fact check that, Rob, and see if it was dire or <laughs> something else. Just ask his fucking name. How, about, just has to how get about that? It. This oh, motherfucker. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. So, <laughs> from that question, we got to go with something pretty hard-hitting. Chelsea blindsided us with this next question. Y'all like cornbread? Oh, dude. What a great question. First off, that sounds amazing right now. <laughs> Ugh, uh, okay, God, go ahead. Go ahead, Steve. Tell me about cornbread, man. Um, yeah, I love cornbread, man. Jiffy, what up? Shout out to Jiffy. Sponsor us. That'd be great. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Pixelated Paranormal Podcasts by Jiffy. <laughs> yeah. Like, we're going to give you uh, 10% of every box sold. Wait, these are only 37 cents a box. And nobody buys it <laughs> except for like a couple times a year <laughs> in the warm and yeah, the, right, the cold right. months for chili. Um, yeah, that and Libby's pumpkin, yeah. man. What up? Yeah. So I think, um, yeah, like, yeah, it, it's great, man. I love cornbread. And every time I think of cornbread, I think of that movie Life with Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. <laughs> that dude is like, <laughs> you going to eat your cornbread? Fuck yeah, I'm going to eat my cornbread. What the fuck is <laughs> my cornbread going to stay right here? <laughs> like, looks like he's going to beat him up or some shit. It's so funny. But yeah, cornbread's the shit. What do you guys, do you guys like cornbread? There are some people out there that I, do not enjoy it. I, I'm weird about cornbread because typically I only have cornbread um, with meals I don't like, like beans, like beans and cornbread, ham and beans. Mm-hmm. I, I don't like cornbread that much because of the meals it's associated with. However, I like a good jalapeno cornbread. Yes, I was going to say that. That's a good variation. I get I get tired of just boring, plain old food. Want- I got to jazz it up, dress it up a bit. So the- put a little cheddar in the cornbread mix, you know, some jalapenos, and then give me a side of like a homemade ranch, not out of a tube or not out of a squirt bottle, but like a, a packet mix. that You mix a homemade ranch at home. Oh, boy. Do you enjoy Cracker Barrel? Um, fuck no. Okay. Uh, Cracker Barrel, it's either take it or leave it. People like it or they don't like it. Um, leave it. Leave it. Okay. I, I, I enjoy it. They have this uh, butter there for like the rolls and shit that's like kind of like honey butter. There's a couple other places around. I think Golden Corral has one of them. It's like a hun- like mm-hmm. a honey butter. You get warm cornbread and use that on use that like a little bit on top mm-hmm. of it and it melts down into it. Dude, it's an awesome. It's so good. Change your life, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I, I did have some good cornbread. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, what was that? Uh, there was a race that Preston and I and Eric and Shayla and everybody used to run. It was called the Hangover Half Series, and we would do this run where like every quarter mile they'd give you like, cornbread. eight ounce Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> they'd give you cornbread. It was the worst. I hated it. Carb loading. Yeah. No, uh, they'd give you like an eight ounce pour of Bud Light, and you would just chug this beer over this 5K. And at the end of it, they'd have chili, and they would make uh, cornbread to go with your chili, but they were almost shaped like a – not quite the size of a hockey puck, but they were like little pucks. Those are pretty good with chili. But anyway, Preston. Oh yeah, I know. Bread. Yeah, you they you buy them, little pre made okay, gotcha. things. The um yeah them them uh yeah cornbread chili that that's my favorite man. Cinnamon rolls are great, but I'm diabetic, so I gotta <laughs> cut out the sugars when I can. True. So mm. the cinnamons and chili, it's kind of a Midwest thing. If people are listening out there. You know, we do got worldwide listeners, everybody, in case you didn't know. Uh, worldwide, <laughs> worldwide, worldwide, worldwide. Prestige, Steve. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, like it's cornbread's great with chili. 
Dude, we are spending so go. much time on Chelsea's question, and this is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it literally is the shortest question, and it's the longest answer. Preston, you like cornbread? I like the taste of cornbread with a good butter. Those mm-hmm. two things go together really well. But I don't like the texture of cornbread, so I typically don't eat it. It's kind of like okay. uh, when you're getting like, uh, you know, the... Uh, like, crumbly. Yeah, it's crumbly. And, and I almost sometimes. feel like sometimes like it, it's kind of almost got like a gritty mm-hmm. texture to it. It definitely mm-hmm. does. The same thing with, with the tortillas. Like if you get the white tortillas, they're very smooth. And then Fluff. if you get the corn tortillas... They they have that weird texture again, but then mm. if you look at taco shells that are like the yellow taco shells that are made from corn, like those are amazing, but they're also fried. So that weird texture that the corn tortilla has, like you get rid of it when you fry Back it. Back up. Tor- yeah, tortilla. Back up. The most offensive thing you've ever mispronounced on this show is tortilla. Tortilla? <laughs> tortilla. That's what I said. There, no, there you, you said go. tortilla. Yeah. There you go. We heard it. So, the white... <laughs> Yeah, the white tortilla is made of flour. Yeah, that's yeah, but it's the texture thing. I I, I prefer the white over the corn. But yes. then, like I said, the when you fry form. it, it doesn't it, it doesn't really make a difference. I think the yellow taco shells are are better for like tacos. But cornbread again, it has that weird texture yeah, thing. So great. I typically uh, shy away from it. Okay, there you go. Hard hitting questions. Okay, now this next one here. Um, I told I told her I would cut out this little bit here and make her very own little mini podcast for her to listen to. My adorable niece wants to know, how do you know if a house is hunted or not? Monica is getting into haunted houses and ghosts and, and scary movies, what? and she pronounces it. Wait. Hun- yeah. She used to hate when I would look like it. Is she into it yet? Uh, she's getting there. We're, we're in Annabelle right now. Bro, she's- when she gets there, we're going to blow her mind. Damn. I know. <laughs> But uh, she's been calling. She's been going to Nana and Papa's house, and she's been asking if the house is hunted, and uh, talking about hunted houses. So, boys, how do you know if a house is hunted or not? If you hear spooky sounds, and they keep reoccurring, maybe ask your mom and dad if they hear them too. That uh-huh. could maybe that could maybe be signs of it. Yeah, probably okay. hunted. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if uh, maybe if your toys start moving around from one room to the other, or if you know your your important belongings are mm-hmm. disappearing and reappearing yeah. somewhere, maybe. Preston, if, what do you think? If uh, there's a smell in the house that you're not used to smelling, so like your mom or your dad have a particular like perfume or cologne, and then all of a sudden you start to smell something else like flowers or roses that you don't normally oh. associate in that house, or if uh, you get cold spots, so like normally. Especially like in the summertime, or uh, you're you're walking around and the AC's not on, and this one particular room is just ice cold. Could be a ghosty. Uh, yeah, I got it. I got one too. Okay. If you wake up one morning and your eyes are completely black, <laughs> cut it out. Jesus. Cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I just picture poor Monica, her little adorable ass, just fucking black eye. Can't do it. God, it'd be so God. terrifying. When I cut her her very own little chunk here, I'm going to have to leave that part out. Yeah, I know, I know. That's oh, I that's funny, it. though. I'll leave it in for everybody else. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, and maybe maybe you hear uh, spooky sounds or, or moaning or, you know, ghost noises. That can mm-hmm. be it, too. I think what I'm going to have to do is find some, some Ghostbuster proton packs and... Start doing some amateur ghost hunting, yeah. maybe. And Monica, you are our very first, very first youngest listener to write in a question. How cool is that? Yeah. And, and Monica, if you you are concerned or worried that uh, your house uh, has ghostly activity, one thing you can do is ask your mom and dad to buy you some incense that um, is sage yeah. scented. Um, ghosts do not like the uh, smell of sage and. Like myrrh, sage, um, those particular scents, you know, typically help uh, ward off evil spirits. So, you know, if you're afraid that there's some ghosties in your room at night, light a simple instant stick and, uh, you know, help it go away. Because most seven and eight year olds have access to myrrh and lighter and frankincense <laughs> and have their own She's going to give gifts to the baby to Jesus. That's what, mom, that's what mom and dad are for, okay? 
Okay, yeah. mom and dad, every uh, night you read her her good night story, light a little sage, light a little myrrh. Sean, <laughs> I give praise to your editing skills for this, <laughs> this station, for your right, niece. Right, because right. I don't want to terrify her, but I also want to make right. this good comedy no, it'll for the be show. Good. It'll be all good. It'll be all good. <laughs> so, Plus, we have a, you guys have a buddy that works at Third Planet, so maybe, uh, you know, she can go pay him a true. visit. She can go she up can in there and be happen. like, yo, I need, I need to hook up. <laughs> but not murder. dragon's uh, blood dragon's blood just is bad all the way around stay away from it never burn dragon's blood incense yeah you get that fucking honkle domper or whatever it's called and burn patchouli only around your uncle steve sesh boy hala <laughs> what do you guys like the fucking hoggle swaps or whatever no, dude, patchouli fucking... man she only needs to burn that around her uncle steve though you know what i'm saying i don't want my niece to smell like a 70 year old hippie <laughs> i know dude i love it okay uh, okay so monica what, what what you could do honey is like preston was saying you know unky sean and lala got you that um oil diffuser for your room so maybe get some some good smells for that and that could possibly uh help as well boom problem solved there we go perfect okay wait did you like now hold on, follow hold on, hold on. Did you get her that for Christmas because you knew she was going to ask this question? Oh, no, 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 no. That would have been, uh, giving... been a great setup play. <laughs> like, we're going to get her this gift. No. So when she listens to this, she'd be like, that's why you got it for oh, me. Oh, gosh. No. <laughs> no. Master plan. No, she'd ask, she'd ask for that for Christmas. Cool. So. Perfect. So she's All into right. aerobics. There you go, honey. That's tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's getting into yoga and Whoa. stretching nice. and relaxing and mindfulness. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Now, a perfect follow-up question to Monica's question. Our old buddy headset Jones here. Oh no! Serious question. <laughs> do you? <laughs> serious question. Do you guys think hauntings could be the cause of residual energy, or do you believe in a more spiritual source? You Steve, want- go ahead. Take a whack. Uh, this is, this question kind of confuses me. So, do you think hauntings could be caused by residual energy? What would residual energy be? Something that was dead. Now is to stay in there like they're trapped in that area. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then a more spiritual source. So does that mean like angels and uh, the afterlife, like the reincarnation stuff? Is that what that means? I, I think that, yeah. Well, I think that's, uh, I'm gonna take what does a, it mean to you? I think, I'm going to take yeah, a different spin on it. So Steve, you answer it your way. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I kind of gathered when I read this question. So I mm-hmm. would think more residual energy. Like okay. I got, I don't know. This question's hard for me, man, because. I am a skeptic. So like most of my hauntings and all that shit come from Hollywood and TV shows. So like that's all <laughs> okay. I see is res- residual energy. And then the spiritual stuff, that's more of in your exorcisms, which I'm kind of cool with. But like I don't I like mm-hmm. more ghost stories more, though, than exorcisms. You know what I mean? And then like and then mm-hmm. other spiritual mm-hmm. things would be like them faith based movies, which aren't my bag. And then like other other just like like. Evan Almighty, you know, that type of shit. So, like, I just, <laughs> right. I think that more residual energy things, like, they're trapped in that area because maybe something bad happened to them. They have unfinished business, business buried wrong, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So. Et cetera, et cetera. Okay, cool. Preston, go ahead, man. So, how I take that question, the difference between res- residual energy and spiritual energy is residual energy would be like the stone tape theory. So you have spiritualists uh-huh. who believe that the the buildings that we inhabit, depending on the material, um, they are able to basically record re- events like a VHS tape. So the hauntings that you're seeing, like a ghost walking from one room to the next, is not an actual ghost. But because there is a house that has a limestone foundation or a granite foundation that Throughout history, there are certain beliefs and practices that say that those materials, if you look at the different like pyramids and things like that, they're built on dragon lines or ley lines or built from a specific material because it's able to record things and then um, play it back at a later date. So if you're attuned, then you could go into this room and access that memory or access that video recording. So hauntings could be a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. So if you have like a murder take place, that maybe that ghost is not the ghost (laughs) of the murder victim, but because that Uh event was so tragic that it it left a 
residual impression and it just plays back to somebody who's attuned to pick it up versus the spiritual side of it would be that you have a, an actual ghost, like a physical, like a, you know, a spiritual being who is just trapped in that area or tuned to that area and they don't want to, you know, leave it. So growing up that you really liked McDonald's on ninth street and you just, you know, have like this affinity for McDonald's that when you die, your spiritual essence wants to go there and then you become like a ghost and haunt it. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll be a McGhost. Yeah. Fuck that, dude. I'd stay clear the fuck away from McDonald's. You think that's where I'm gonna spend the rest of my days in a McDonald's? With uh, diarrhea and stomach yeah. rot. Oh, Oof. God. <laughs> Mick Steve. Fuck Mick Steve. That. Yep. That's not my Um no. I never mind. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up Stone Tape Theory. Um I <sighs> I got kind of a, a mixed bag here. I think that people can be haunted. I think places can be haunted. And I think every once in a while you get a, um, a spiritual side of things, uh, kind of like Steven, you were leaning towards like angels and stuff like that. I think there's a shit ton of stuff in the world that we don't quite know. I think that in, in the stone tape theory defense, I think that if something so traumatic happens to somebody, then that energy, that negativity can basically be sent out like an explosion. Like if a person gets murdered so violently and so abruptly, they don't know what happened. It's just sheer terror, primal lizard brain terror. I think that can go out in an echo and yeah, maybe it could stain, you know, the, uh, the room or the building or whatever. And it just plays like an echo over and over and over, you know, seeing somebody walk down a hall, the ghost of Boily Rectory, that kind of stuff. Uh, common practice of like, oh, and every night at seven o'clock, you can see the ghost of a little girl in the window. <sighs> you know, sometimes it's more of like an energy being played over and over and over, like a, like a tape. Oh, but I, like I also think seekers. that, <laughs> right. But I also think people can be haunted and maybe that kind of goes towards, um, Something else, like you were saying, Steve, like maybe possession. Um, there's a really great episode of the new Unsolved Mystery series, um, season two. Um, it talks about the people who died in the tsunami. Oh my god! I feel like <laughs> Gillum, Japan. Gillum's is, going nuts right now. I bet. <laughs> is he? You can cut that out. Our buddy Gillum is uh, yeah. on the on the call with us. He's listening. He's not. He's not uh, interacting, but he's here listening to us. <laughs> he's going. He's, he keeps asking. Have you watched it? Have you watched it? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's yeah. really good. Yeah. Um, so I won't spoil it too much for anybody, but it has to, uh, part of it has to do with a, a young lady who is constantly plagued by the spirits of people who have passed away to the point where she has to seek, uh, guidance <sighs> and help from a, uh, um, that sounds a pastor, basically. Dude. So, I mean, I think people are sensitive. I've seen my fair share of weird shit in the world. Is that because I want to? Because, you know, when you look for something so much and so strongly, you're bound to find something. Sure, maybe that's completely uh, acceptable that I just want it so bad that um, I've convinced myself these things have happened, maybe. Um, but I also think that, you know, maybe when you die – you get a choice. Do you want to move to the afterlife or do you want to stay here? You know, you're allowed maybe, or maybe purgatory or limbo is mm. basically you're stuck on earth for 30 days wandering around while your judgment is decided. That's a whole religion thing too. But I don't know, man. I, I think it really depends. I think places can be haunted by residual energy. And I think that people can be haunted by spirits because of those of those people who were, um, Oh, whatever, closer to the veil, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So there, does that does that work? Maybe places yeah. can be haunted, but people can be haunted too. Yeah. I'm cool with that answer. There you go. And sometimes you just got to get exercise. Cool. And I think, uh, you know, going going off of that, like just looking at religion as a whole, like that's going to affect your belief because you have uh, people who have near-death experiences but they're never uh -huh. quite the same. So you have somebody who grew up as a Hindu when they have a near death experience, what they experience on the other side is almost based on their religion because they've grown up in that culture that it's what they're comfortable with. So to be able to have that experience and gain something with it, you're not going to, you're not going to get the true view of what the afterlife is. You're going to get something that you're, you know, you're, conscious mind can wrap itself around to pull that information out of. And then yeah. if you look at, um, you know, we've, we've talked in the past about like Dybbuk boxes. So the, the Dybbuk, 
um, in folklore is like clingy ghost. So there's this idea in Judaism. Five clinger. Yeah, that they talk about. <laughs> so once you pass over, like they don't believe in purgatory, but there's this idea of, okay, so Steve, you're a crack addict and you die Thanks. from an overdose. Naturally. So before before you can move on to the afterlife, you have to find somebody else who's alive that is suffering from the same ailments, who's addicted oh, to yeah. drugs, addicted to crack, and you have to help them overcome that. And then once you do that, then you've kind of earned the karma or earned the you know the good boy credit to be able to move on. So in the afterlife, you're a social worker. Yeah. Fuck. So <laughs> wait, so when you I'm, die, you're I'm sentenced fucked. to fucking scared straight, but it's scared clean. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So you know, you, it's like the best rehab ever. Yeah. So shit. that idea that the clingy ghost, like where Sean said, like people could be haunted. Well, very much in you know certain religions, there is that concept where. Yes, you could carry, you know, a demon, so to speak, because that person is trying to help you work through all your bad stuff because that's what they died from. Mm -hmm. And they got to be able to to do that to move on. Is it bad? Like we've talked about afterlife and uh, reincarnation and all this spiritual shit. Like, is it bad to just say, I just want to be ash? I don't. I don't want to be any no. of that shit. Like, I don't care about any of that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm tired enough like, as a living human being. Yeah. I want to fucking keep on working. Yeah, like, yeah, like dude, I just, want I, just to, I just want to be on a, I just want to be on a ghost boat with a ghost martini in my hand. Fuck all this other shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's just weird. No, it's weird to it's think. It's like, man, all, man, there's so many different options and different theories uh-huh. and ideas that we've talked about in this past couple episodes. It's like, my gosh. <laughs> like what? Yeah. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. Like, you know, That's what's fun about these questions is it really makes you think. Yeah. Uh, and get different people's views and this opinions shit, on man. it too. Yeah. For sure. Cool. What's the next one? Cool. Cool. Next one is just an anonymous question. Can you cover more true crime stories or are there any really good true crime stories with a paranormal undertone? Yeah. My answer is yes and yeah. yes. Yes and yes. I think the true crime thing, I'd like to investigate that more, but I don't want to mm-hmm. get addicted because I think we'll, well, we'll have so much fun doing that and then we'll get away from the paranormal thing. But if we can just find specific true crime stories with paranormal undertones, fuck yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Save them. Like, you know, yeah. do like one, you know, if there are, I'm sure there's. I mean, the Slenderman uh, one's a famous one. You know, the uh, oh, one yeah. case that comes to mind for me is um, the case of Billy Milligan, which um, was the inspiration for the character in... Um, Wait, was that the guy on the bus? No, um, Split. Oh, that story's... F- yeah. So M. Night Shyamalan's movie Split, um, the guy that had the multiple personalities, um, oh, that's yeah, actually yeah. based off a true crime sort of case where the perpetrator was a man named Billy Milligan and his story unfolds about the different personalities that are committing these different crimes. So I think that'd be a fun one to tackle. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, we've kind of had it on the back burner because I mean, again, in a world of thousands of podcasts, especially now during, Oh, it's about to get worse. I mean, with all this pandemic and stuff, that's the best thing you can do. They just, they ceased all Hollywood production. I know. So yeah, every, literally every celebrity, they did, or they're pushing. Yep. Yep, They're all going to go to podcasts. Every actor and all that kind of stuff. And that's fine. You know what? Great. I am not disillusioned to the fact that, uh, I'm going to outplay Dax Shepard or Justin (laughs) Long or anything like that. You know, I I just, uh, I like listening to famous people talk too. So we as much as I like independent podcasting too. Sure. Podcasting is cathartic. Um, sometimes I've had some of my very worst days on Tuesdays. You and turned then, around with Conan, and, man. Well, I turned it around with you guys. I turned it around yeah. knowing that, well, at least 1030, no matter how many times I've had to drag my ass to my chair and turn on this microphone, yeah. like it, it quickly turns around because worst case for me, if if nothing else, I'm still having a fun chat yeah. with some of my best friends about weird shit. So Until that some of hits. us are craft beers, and <laughs> sometimes we're a PBR. So <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But yeah, so yeah, there's there's plenty of good, there's plenty of great podcasts out there that do true crime. Um, I think that second question is really the the best uh, answer. The best part of your question yeah. here is yeah, that's the best answer. Yes, there are plenty of odd and bizarre and unexplainable true crime. I think we'll get into um, 
and we'll kind of avoid, you know, Ted Bundy, great story. It's been done a hundred times by people far smarter than us. So I think maybe we'll stick to the, the weird shit, you know, unexplainable stuff, that mm-hmm. kind of stuff, maybe. So, or if you guys feel like doing Ted Bundy, fucking holler at your boy, I'll be, I'll be down, but. I still I like to uh, dig deep, deep into the barrel and find the weird shit that is a little less known, you know. Cool. This is from listener Seth, Sean's boy Seth. Uh, Seth I'm assuming <laughs> he says, <laughs> "What paranormal show freaks you out the most?" Oh, Seth, is that Big Man? Never mind. I'll rephrase that. Is that this Big Man? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because I typed that. What the fuck am I thinking? <laughs> Sorry. As you can see, Yoda's telling you what I am right now. Uh, so <laughs> Seth, our big man, Seth, man, he's an awesome dude. He says, uh, he's. I think he's a new listener, too. We, uh, I asked him. Yeah, on, yeah, he just started listening not too long ago. Yeah, I put some on yeah. Snapchat. He doesn't do the whole social media stuff, so I put some on Snapchat in the story thinking, meh, maybe a Snapchat personal answer, and big man came through. So And he <laughs> said he subscribed, and he's looking forward to following along. So. Yeah, it's so funny. I got an email from him as well saying he just started listening. Cool, yeah. Isn't it wild to think that there, we, there's people we know? Like, we've known Seth for, for years, man. Hell, 20 it's years. It's just maybe. that his life is, is he's, he's always been a dude of, of, like, you know, he does his thing. And he's always cool to see mm-hmm. friends. And he's got a fa- little family. And, you know, and just, yeah. he just doesn't do the social media thing. And it's hard. It's he's, hard he's to. He's not a slave to Twitter. Yeah, like it's, <laughs> it's hard to remember that there's people <laughs> that are genuinely like that. It's amazing uh-huh. that he uh-huh. can still do that. So shout out to Seth. But he asks. What up, big man? What paranormal show freaks you out the most? Preston, what's your answer? Do you know? I don't have one that in particular, like every time I watch it, that uh, freaks me out. I think we're all going to have the same par- answer in general. Paranormal but- witness. <laughs> Okay. Because yeah. it's based off true stories. Like they actually bring in the people to tell their side of the story. Like, you know, I was a kid, this happened. There have been just a sprinkling of episodes from Paranormal Witness that have resonated with me. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And yeah. those freak me out the most. Otherwise, like, you know, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters International, all that bullshit doesn't really uh, freak me out. Um, the the one that was on Netflix, um, I can't remember the name. Haunt, the, haunted, the haunted. Yeah. Like that one excited me, and I'm like, oh my god, this one story is so amazing. And then it's like, um, this guy was actually writing a, a novel for Creepy Pasta and was gonna make a movie, and, a, and this is the script. And I'm like, you know what? Fuck you, Netflix, yeah, because was, yeah, you, you, you yeah. broke my heart. I didn't even get to that part yet. Wow. Um. So my, I'm going to think more outside the box. I thought everybody was going to be like X files. You know, obviously that's my go-to answer. Cause like, does every episode freak me out? No, but were there a shit ton of episodes that did early years of my <laughs> life? You're damn right. It did. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. So more so in like recent times, um, so I'm gonna have, it's going to have a couple, a couple answers. So I don't give a shit. Uh, so the first season <laughs> of walking dead. Now I could, we consider paranormal zombies. To a degree, right? Yeah. Right? Sure. So yeah. uh, that first season, I was really looking forward to that. I never read the comics, graphic novels, whatever. Um, I just saw the show was coming out. It was about zombies. And that first scene where there's a little girl that just gets zombie, that gets, you know, just gone. And I'm like, holy yeah. shit, this is going to be a whole new thing. And then that whole first season was just like on the edge of your seat, not knowing what's going on. That first scene when he goes underneath that tank and there's somebody in the tank and you get in there and you're like, and there's just zombies over it. It captured that like really intense, like freak freak vibe at that point Yeah. to where I, at that point I was only getting that vibe from like movies or other TV shows that were more like thriller type based. So I would say that. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my other answer would be uh, haunting of Hill house. I loved watching that show on Netflix and it creeped me out. It not only creeped me out, but like I still remember like certain scenes, like visually. And it was just it was just so good. And then to know like the backstory of um listening to uh the main act actress lady that plays uh the mother and the director of that that did um what the hell's the movie called? Doctor Sleep. They're they're married in real life. Yeah. And you can hear their passion for horror and setting up scenes. And like, it really creeped me out. I'm like, these dudes know their shit on hauntings. 
That's why they're uh-huh. so particular to detail about like things in the background. And like when I when I caught that, because like I would see things on Facebook pop up, be like, oh, things hidden in the background and key scenes of Haunted Hill House. Yeah. I never clicked on it because I'm like, I want to see if I find these. And I did. And I was like, that is so tight. And it mm-hmm. it made me, what, what? And I'd rewind. I love moments like that. That creeps me out. So there's my answer. You're, uh, Gillum, uh, he, earlier, did we say that he's a um, unsolved mystery nut fanatic? Yeah, I believe he watches all of them, yeah. The but the old stuff from like the eighties and nineties, dude. That's such a that's yeah. such a good. Yep. Oh, that's such a good answer. That was, that was gonna be my. But answer, here's my Seth. thing, though, man. Here's here here's my thing. That's that's a great answer, but I struggle with this because was unsolved mysteries really that spooky, or was it just Robert Stack's voice and his just like charisma? A little a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B because the reason because if anybody yeah. else did that voice and you looked at them bad reincarnations. I don't, th- I don't think, I mean, the music really pops it too. Cause when they're doing the reincarnations, you know, or re- reenactments or whatever, like, yeah. they, and, and there were some stories like there were, they were really creepy. I do agree. And would unsolved spooky. mysteries be as scary if Gilbert Godfrey, or oh Bob my no, 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 no. <laughs> Bob Cat, oh. a ghost came. Oh. <laughs> There's a ghost, half whack. <laughs> oh, God. That's my answer, uh, Seth. Unsolved mysteries, old school, Robert Stack. I would watch that show for the creepy shit. Like, yeah. okay, you know, D.B. Cooper's bag of money, that's fucking great. Move on. Oh, there's fucking aliens abducting fishermen out of the middle of a fucking lake. Like, buckle up, folks. Okay, yeah. Where's my fucking blanket? And here well, and here um, it is. If you really – anybody out there that loves Unsolved Mysteries, the old school episodes, there is an app on your phone, your Xbox, your TV, everywhere. It's called Pluto TV. Amazon Prime. Is it on, am, right. are they all on Amazon Prime? Yeah, too? it's on Amazon Prime. Okay, cool. Um, and and so there's the option too. On if you don't have that, this is free. Pluto TV. They actually have different different um, channels dedicated to things like there's silly things like Dog the Bounty Hunter, Comedy Central, Crank Anchors, etc. There's an old school unsolved mysteries, 24 hours a day, just random episodes, and it's tight. And yep. there's like an ad like every what 15, 20 minutes, the 30 minute episodes. You get an ad an episode. Who gives a shit? It's awesome. I was kind of kind of hoping Gillum could fact check me on this one because I don't remember what the exact season one, like maybe like season four, season five, but they they had this story of this girl who you know lived out in kind of like a, a wooded area, like away from town. It was very secluded, and she was home alone by herself, and her parents were out. And the story was that. You know, it was late at night and, you know, something had tripped like, you know, the the floodlights around the, the property. And she was freaking out because she's like, oh, my God, it's a burglar. Like, you know, somebody's going to murder mm. me, blah, blah, blah. And then it, the, the camera kind of zooms in on like this giant glass door and it's like a fucking Bigfoot. And it's like pounding against the glass and, you know, like <laughs> it's trying fresh. to break into the house. I bet that scared and the it, shit out of you. It really resonated with me because we... We lived out in the country, and I'm like, oh, my God, like, is yeah. Bigfoot going to come, like, in the middle of the night and break down this fucking door and kill me? And that was, like, one of the episodes of Unsolved Mystery that really, and you know, then, stood out to me. And then at the end, he's, like, he says that, join me, perhaps you will be able to solve mystery. And that leaves a number. And then yeah. at the after the, he they leave the number, they go, they go into, like, a recap of – other unsolved mysteries that were unsolved that are now solved. So you're like, holy yeah, shit, update. this alien, <laughs> this, this fucking yeah, Bigfoot or this alien <laughs> could be knocking on Preston's door <laughs> like the next day. Yep. He's got to call that number. Yeah. It's a great, yeah. you're right, dude. Like that is, that is, dang, that's a good answer. The nineties were killer, killer for paranormal shows. There was an episode of unsolved mysteries. It was non paranormal, but it was like some guy who was dating a girl and she wouldn't leave him alone. Like she was stalking him. All I remember is the phone ringing him and him saying, leave, leave me alone. What do you want from me? And you hear this girl's voice go, you. And he's like, me? What do you want from me? And she's like, I want to kill you. And that fucking that freaked me out so bad. Just the disembodied voice of a girl whispering into a phone, she wants to kill you. I remember I got up. 
I casually walked out of the living room into my bedroom. My mom had made this clown doll that was like, you know, three foot tall. It sat on top of my, my shelving unit with all my toys. Wait, what? How? We've never heard about this fucking poltergeist shit before. Yeah, I walked by, didn't turn on my bedroom light, just walked into my bedroom. That clown doll fell off of the fucking shelf on top of me. And I fell down, and in my mind, there was a giant, creepy-ass killer clown trying to kill me. I was screaming, what? crying, dragging myself across the floor. My mom came in, and I think it was a mixture of laughter and, uh, oh, my God, are you all right? And I'm like, it's trying to get me. <laughs> and she's like, huh, that's weird. This clown didn't have a Woody before. <laughs> <laughs> and it woke up and it was all a fever dream. <laughs> oh Jesus! Wait, so I, um, I'm so, confused. The um, yeah. was this before Poltergeist or after? I had never watched Poltergeist uh, up until I was probably about ten or twelve. Wait, were you triggered when you so, saw that scene? I it gave me a little bit of a cold sweat. Yeah, holy <laughs> shit, dude! <laughs> yep, uh, deep sea trauma. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, Seth, I loved Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, X Files is fun. I love Paranormal Witness because, again, it's a, it's a fucking roll of the dice, man. Are you getting ghosts? Are you getting a fucking werewolf who changes tires in the country? You don't know. Uh, I love Paranormal Witness a lot. The rest of the Ghost Hunter shows are okay. Um, anything with Josh Gates, Expedition Unknown, right now. He's got another show called Expedition X that has Jessica Chobot um, as one of the hosts where they go out and try to find just spooky shit. Um, that's a lot of fun. Where do you watch that at? Uh, Hulu. Yeah. It's a Discovery Channel show. That's uh, Sean's and mine's uh, love child. Yeah. <laughs> Josh Gates, right. Yeah. <laughs> where he could be our daddy. <laughs> Either way. Yep. All right. All right. Mm. Let's move on. So Mindy wants to know, I would like to know your unpopular opinions relating to the world of cryptids, aliens, and the paranormal. Loch Ness Monster, 100% bullshit. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. With I that. knew this was going to be his. <laughs> I knew. I was going to say, I mean, at least Preston and I, maybe Stephen too. It's such a weird hill to die on. <laughs> like, I'm not, fuck Nessie. Isn't that weird? It is yeah. a weird, because it's like, it could be, man. Uh, and anything like Loch Ness related, so, related um, so even in the United States, like I don't even know what our fucking Nessie versions are, but fuck those guys Chappie too. From yeah, like fuck Chappie, Champ. Get out of here with that bullshit. Go find yeah, something. Yeah, Champ. New. Chappie's a robot. Champ. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's me too. I'm not a big fan of Nessie. Um, I think it's fine. Nessie haters. I. Give a, I could give a lick, man. To me, you put Star Wars and Loch Ness Monster in the same boat, ship them both off in the middle of the ocean. I don't really care. Oh, you see, be Star Trek and uh, <laughs> Loch Ness for me. <laughs> fuck Star Trek and fuck Nessie. <laughs> huh. uh, that's hilarious. Well, all right, guys. Just, episode 176, just, the day the show the died. The day the music died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah, uh, um, Loch Ness Monster. Steve, what about you, man? Uh, what's, what's one thing you don't so, buy? Like, I really thought about this because I'm a skeptic on everything so it's really hard for me to say like uh-huh. I, I definitely not believe in that Steve's like this podcast <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like I was thinking really hard on this question and I think I'm going to go with like orbs like in pictures orbs. and videos and people oh, I saw orbs and I'm like good one bro that's a fucking reflection of light that's a dust in a spectacle press and I know this yeah. might offend you I don't know I, it's just really hard to like because I've seen people's pictures I'm like that could easily be you know a dust going by a lens or it hitting the shadow of the lens and the light in a certain way, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I'll, but, mm-hmm. I'll back you up on that, Steve, because there was a, a, a guy probably, oh, five years ago, six years ago, something like that. So don't fucking quote me on the time frame. Um, but he was actually doing an experiment where don't quote me, boy, he, I ain't say shit. He, <laughs> He was Rob has you fucking shook. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> yeah. He does. He's like, oh. <laughs> he was <laughs> he was trying to figure out like if there's any correlations between like newer archaeological sites and older archaeological sites. And then the ones like the placement, so the ones that were placed on dragon lines or ley lines versus the ones that were built later on that are just kind of haphazard out in the middle of nowhere. So there's like this myth or this this tale that when some of the first French explorers or archaeologists were around like the Great Pyramid of Egypt, 
Um, you know, this guy had like a wine bottle or whatever, and he was like trying to, you know, cork it open and take a swig while they're climbing up the, you know, the side of the pyramid to get into it. And like mm-hmm. all this electricity built up, shot into it. And, you know, the Egyptians were like, you know, fucking dark magician, get him. And <laughs> dark so there's, magician. there's, yeah, there's, so there's all these kind of correlations or tales about there being a lot of energy around there. So this guy, what he discovered was he would go out two or three in the morning for like a month and he would set up video and he would set up film. And what he found was that on the older sites, so the ones that were built like 5,000, 10,000, you know, however many years ago, and the ones that were on like a ley line or a dragon line, that the air had more of an electric electrical charge to it so that orbs were actually visible on the camera nothing paranormal to it there wasn't anything that he was trying to say they're like oh there's a lot of spiritual energy what he was trying to prove was that those areas the way that they were built and the area that they were built on magnetically or electrically charged the particles around and that's why he was seeing the orbs in those sites versus seeing the orbs at a site that was built 500 years ago or 800 years ago because if they weren't on a certain area or if they weren't in a certain location, he wouldn't get anything. But then he would go to these ancient sites and he was like, it was like a fucking snowfield. So do I think that it's ghosts? No. But do I think that there's like a scientific reason for it? Like maybe that the reason why you're getting them sometimes on cameras is that you're picking up these electrically charged particles. Okay. Let me piggyback off of that. Um, orbs, I'm, I'm 50, 50. I, if orbs are real to me, I'd want to see one. Uh, I'd want to see it, you know, flying around the cemetery. The thing that really chaps my ass that I can't get behind are ghost lights, like the Marfa lights, the lights out there at the corner South. What is it? South, uh, Southeastern corner of like Oklahoma spook lights, I can't get into it. I think nine times out of 10, you're seeing highway lights way off in the distance and there's a fork in the road and you're just seeing cars driving for, you know, half a mile and then turning off. And that's why they come to a certain point, get higher and higher and higher. And then they just burn out. Fair enough. That's my hot yeah. take. And what also about ball lightning uh, ball, ball lightning, I think is neat um, that I can get behind. But here's hot take right now, uh, Preston, that might might break your heart. Ancient aliens bore me to goddamn tears. <laughs> yeah, I find this stuff. You know, it's not it's not everybody's cup of tea. Like I get it. Well, it, but let me let me try to save myself. Give me a shovel. I don't like reading about it. I could really care less about watching about it. But when you talk about it on the show, that part that piques my interest. Oh. I, I will say that. It's a summarized I, I version. Yeah, yeah. You're giving me the spark notes, baby. Yeah. Um, no, I it's I respect it for what it is. I will not read any books about it. I could, don't really care about it. Um, like the Ark of the Covenant, it's cool. I think it's neat. Um, there's no goblins that crawl out of it. Then fucking move on. <laughs> there's no <laughs> goblins <laughs> crawl out of the fucking ancient. <laughs> yeah, ancient aliens are fine. I just that's that's all cool, y'all. In the meantime, I'm looking for the fucking current aliens, okay? Modern day aliens. I want the fucking nuns in Las Vegas who are trying to hide their gray alien faces. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. That's what I want. You you didn't make me and cry. Then, I respect that. <laughs> we still come together over a mutual hatred of the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, fuck that thing. Now, if you guys come out, you guys, if it comes out tomorrow on the news, Loch Ness Monster is real, fuck Yeah. I'll be I'll be over the fucking moon about it because I think the thing is it's one of those that has been around for so long I just kind of get tired of oh another Loch Ness monster sighting nope just a nerd with a fucking submarine the minute they prove it real I'll be all over it I'll buy a fucking t shirt but until I'll, then I will only get excited about the buy a t shirt <laughs> I will only get excited about the Loch Ness monster. If you can scientifically prove to me that it's related to time slips, then I will be over the moon. Ooh. Otherwise, I'm just like, meh, it's just some fucking fish that we just haven't discovered yet. You know, like, woo, yeah. go science. 
Right, right. Or if you can prove to me that Aleister Crowley summoned the Loch Ness monster, yeah. that's pretty fucking cool. I like that part about <sighs> oh it. That'll God. give me a nerd boner right there. Yeah, yeah. fuck yeah. I mean, give me some of that demon sex magic. That's yeah. how you made it. You made a fucking tulpa and you just fucking farted it out in the middle of the lock. That's Boom. great. Sorry, Mindy. <laughs> <laughs> if it's just if it's just an ancient fucking dinosaur that survived this many years, it's still cool. But yeah, yeah, right. Yep. Kaylee wants to know, boys. What's your favorite brand of hot dog? Vanistel. Vanistel. I don't know. Okay. Yeah the uh, the plant uh, there's a uh, I don't know if it's still open or not but there is a uh, there was oh, a plant in an, in Emporia that my uh, grandfather worked at so mm-hmm. he was one of the uh, head butchers and then my uncle was the uh, head guy in the spice department so he was the one that had to go through and like make all the spices and then make sure like they tasted right and everything. So growing up as a kid, we always had like fantasy hot dogs, fantasy hot links, fantasy you know deli meat. Did you guys have party ham, fantasy party ham? Fuck yeah, we did. And the fucking uh, weird ass square blocks of ham. Yeah. So that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be my number one right there. <laughs> there you go. Okay, um, Steve. What about you, man? All beef. I love an all beef. All hot beef dog. hot dogs. Yeah, I love it. Um, okay, but only done on uh, one of them. Like toaster oven, rotis- like rotisserie. Uh, like at a quick trip. Like I like that, but they make them for home. Gillum has one. They're amazing. They make they make hot dogs taste different. It's nuts. Huh. Okay. Because you're kind of getting a nice little char, a little simmer over the skin, but you're not burning the skin maybe. Yeah. That's my answer, man. Mm. Okay. Good horror house uh, I'm kind of the same way. and I'll eat the fucking, you know, turkey and pork eyeballs and butthole, you know. Hot dogs, what are those? Uh, Bar S Franks. I'll eat those all yeah. day. Those are fine. Um, but I, I do like an all beef, a nice thick all beef hot dog. I'm sorry, I know. And you were just like, I love a nice thick hot dog. Thick. <laughs> like, when he hot said dog. thick, I was like, stop. Um, I like a nice, a nice, I like a nice big all beef hot dog. Uh, quick trip hot dogs are pretty fantastic. A Nathan's hot dog is okay. Oh, Nathan's is dope. Uh, I think the hot dogs they serve at Freddy's are Fucking god awful for really? whatever reason. I think they're good. What about I Dog and Shake? Like Their reason. hot dogs are good. They yeah, put the okay. celery Again, salt on dog it. Dog and Shakes. Mm, yeah, it's okay. Um, now here it goes. Bonus question, boys. What do you like on your hot dog? You get you get one hot dog to make however you want. What do you put on it? Bet I'll go. Okay. Ketchup, mustard, uh huh, relish, uh huh. Um, okay, sweet relish or uh, Chicago relish. Uh, Okay, so is that sweet or is I think that? It's um, more. Of, I don't know. It's more of like a sweet, I believe. Yeah, sweet. Okay. Um, not so much sour. Um, yeah. I like uh, little tiny diced onions. Even mm-hmm. better if they're sautéed onions. They're bomb on there. Okay. And then I love <laughs> um, top it off with the celery salt. Okay. I'm pretty. I'm okay. pretty pretty basic with mine. It. I. I've been to a hot dog bar before, and they're. It's fucking awesome. Obviously, before yeah, COVID. that's pretty. That's pretty badass. It's tight. Really I tight. I like to lay down dill pickle slices. Fuck relish. It's a waste of everybody's time. Mm-hmm. Um, I want some slices. If you can give me the long, weird, like sandwich slices yeah. of dill pickle, that's fine too. Or I'll take slices either way. Little round coins. Uh, then pico de gallo. Get some nice. Um, Oh, God, what do you call that shit? Cilantro mixed into mm-hmm. that? That's perfect. Then some ketchup, then some mustard. Then you lay the hot dog down on top of that. So your your ketchup and your mustard is great, but it becomes a monster in itself whenever it's on the top of the yes. hot dog and you it gets it, in your mustache. Yeah I, yeah, I put it inside the bun, yep. and then I twirl the hot there dog through it. So it mixes. There, there you go. Perfect mix. Mm-hmm. I just slap it down like a nice little lid to keep everything inside, mm-hmm. and then I uh, pepper it with a little bit of celery salt. Yeah. Next time we go to Quick Trip together, I want you to make me a hot dog the way you do it. That sounds good. Are we having a dog off? Let's do a dog off. You'll obviously win because that does sound a lot more fucking cuisine than mine. Mine's like, here, just, you want basic American? <laughs> like, yeah. Then you have to put a stack, uh, at least a two and a half inch stack of napkins in your pocket because that bastard gets messy. Yeah. Preston, what goes on your hot dog, buddy? Spicy brown mustard. That's it. Okay, traditionalist. Nice. Yeah. I do like mustards of all kinds on hot dogs. On a dogs. piece of white bread, Preston? Yeah. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Not a hot dog bun? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> you savage. 
I do like some yeah. spicy harkens, brown mustard, though. That shit's bomb. I laugh, and I'm like, that harkens back to how I ate hot dogs half the time as a kid. Yeah, but now, I mean, yeah, maybe as a kid, but now you're like a, kind of an adult. Don't Nostalgia be a- trip, man. <laughs> some of those like action figures, some of those like, like oh, white trash yeah. hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're a house divided in my household because uh, Jeffrey and the kids like the kosher hot dogs, which I think is Nathan's. Uh-huh. Um, but I, I stick yeah. with – we always got to buy like two packs of hot dogs because I stick with what I like. So, yeah. Hey, cool, man. Fan of steel. That's fun. I'm putting my there foot down and in then, this house. Fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and then Gillum weighed in here. Gillum likes chili and cheese. Dude, who now, Gillum, can you get down on a Sonic drive-in uh, chili cheese coney? I bet he can, but he doesn't put any of the extra shit on there. No, uh, I, I love a good chili cheese Me coney too. and just put some ketchup on it. Really? Ketchup? Oh, buddy. Yeah, want a little to- sweet. A little sweet on that That's salty. crazy, because you know what I do? I have them add mayo. Or not mayo. I'm sorry. Oh, gross. No. Ew, you mustard. fucking savage. Go <laughs> mustard. Home. Mustard is very common in on conies in, from where they originate in the East Coast. Uh huh. And uh-huh. I have them put uh, onions, obviously the cheese, and then add mustard. And it's, oh, God, it's fucking bomb. I love it. Pretty killer. Now, Kaylee also wants to know, boys, what is the scariest moment you've ever experienced that was not paranormal? Two. I'll go first. So mine goes back to the trigger warning again. It's going to be about the car wreck. Uh, mm-hmm. Coming very close to such a traumatic event, having a near death experience, uh, very terrifying uh, in general. And then to have, like, your adrenaline build that much and finally, like, it build, build, build. And then finally when you get out of the mangled wreck, you get on the gurney. They're taking you to be airlifted. Never flying before in your entire life. Obviously, this isn't the way you wanted that to happen. And then your adrenaline just fucking dying on you. And then all that hits and then you get that adrenaline sickness, that nausea. I'm in a fucking plane. Where am I going to puke? So on my mind, my oh, mind's boy. firing like a, you know, like just so fast. I don't know what's going on. I can't see anything because my my uh, I'm like ter- You guys both know my vision's terrible. Um, yeah. Then they're like, okay, what we're gonna do is if you say you need to puke, and then like they're screaming because you know the helicopter and it's kind of open open bayed. It's fucking. I'm like in the fucking military, I'm like big John Wiener over here. I'm like, what? Like what's going on over here? And then yeah, so like the, the soundtrack to Mash is going. <laughs> or, yeah, like Fortunate Sons playing. I'm like fucking non flashbacks. Uh, so yeah, like I'm freaking out, man. Like it's crazy. Uh, they say, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick you up and uh, we're gonna like. Uh, take the gurney and then like push you over and I'm strapped in you know like you know being safe because they don't know if anything's broke oh, and they turn me over and I'm thinking I'm gonna puke off to the side like let it drip onto the board or something floor you know it's a fucking medical chopper they probably got blood and everything else in there in between yeah they just hose it out nope they push me up air me out <laughs> over the side where all I see is the patchwork and dude I saw 2020 vision in that bitch <laughs> <laughs> Your last fleeting oh, backup supply yeah. of adrenaline kicked yeah, in. Dude. You're like, oh, yeah, and it was just a, it was a, it was like a. After that, it was a crash. I remember puking and then like nothing. The next thing I remember, waking up to everybody stripping my clothes off of me, cutting it, everybody picking glass out of me and stuff like that. So it was like, Jesus, <laughs> and then yes, yeah, but like, so telling that in a court case oh. is pretty intense and. Yeah. Any jury will side with you on a pain and suffering claim after that. Let's just say that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so I, I picture I picture the trauma you experienced to when Chunk almost gets his hand stuck in that Oh bunker. yeah. Just that pandemonium. I just took this <laughs> he puts his fucking yeah, his hand in there. I love that movie. Oh Jesus. Yeah. I didn't I never knew that. Uh, the helicopter story Dude, until many years yeah, later I mean, and you told me and I was just like oh my god because yeah. you're like car wreck <laughs> not really the worst yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm like yeah <laughs> uh, that whole fucking that whole hospital was just a, a nightmare but I don't want to talk bad about hospitals yeah. man because they're going through a shitty time right now that's so. true that's true yeah but yeah that was definitely the scariest moment in my life that wasn't mm-hmm. paranormal So I'll kind of give the spark notes of uh, my story here because I could probably go on and tell it for a long time. But for anonymity's sake, uh, I'm going to kind of leave out the name of where I work because Preston and I work for the same place. Um, When I was in El Dorado working, this probably took place maybe 2012, 2013, perhaps. 
Um, I worked in the optical department of the store. And one night a woman came in with her three kids. It was like an eight year old girl who, um, sat in the shopping cart for most of the transaction. And then her two twin five year old boys. And they come in and they do their order and we're kind of finishing things up at the cash register, just kind of doing some small talk, chit chatting and everything. And this random family walks in who's kind of like the epitome of like backwoodsy deliverance looking people. And I'm trying to cash this lady out and finish up. And this creepy family walks over and starts immediately commenting about how cute this lady's kids are. And they're saying like, Oh, you got such a good looking family. Oh, your kids sure are pretty. What's their names? Hey, little girl, what's your name? Oh, come here, boys. And the mom is very polite, but you know, obviously she's unsettled and she's a little nervous. And I'm pretty desensitized, and I like to think of myself as being pretty cool and relaxed in most situations. But I start getting these alarm bells going off in my head, and I'm starting to get a little nervous. And the mom's doing her best to keep this small chat and talking to the the weird, creepy deliverance family. But then the old man, um, sorry, I should say it's a husband and a wife and then the husband's brother. That's how this creepy backwoods family dynamic works out. The husband crouches down and starts trying to reach in and like touch the girl's arm, saying stuff like, Hey, sweetie, what's your name, honey? I asked you what's your name. Oh, how old are you, boy? You sure are pretty. Jesus. And the mom's getting kind of creeped out more so than she was before. And meanwhile... The creepy ass brother is slowly like a shark stalking these two little boys as they run around the vision center I'm in. And I just keep on getting the weird feeling like this is more than just creepy backwoods people. There's something up. And the wife of the creepy backwoods husband starts talking about how great kids are and how much work they are to raise them. And the mom of the the three kids, she says, oh, well, do you guys have kids of your own? And the backwoods wife looks over and says, oh, yeah, we got a couple of them at home. But we want one more. (sighs) And like immediately alarm bells are going off in my head and I'm starting to get so nervous and on edge, man, like. You know, my hackles are raised. Creep meter. And it was just the most unsettling thing I've experienced. And the mom has gone from being polite and and sweet, doing the small talk dance, to just on the defense, trying to get her kids to come back over. And she's like panicking and trying to weave the shopping cart back and forth, trying to shake off this guy, and but not seem too obvious that she's on to him. And she's calling out like, boys, boys, get over here, please. Come on, come on, get over here. And I've recessed back to my uh, workstation and I'm on the phone paging for, you know, management, store management to come up to the front here to kind of give me some backup and ask these creeps to fucking leave. And I kind of pop off kind of smart alecky after I hang the phone up. And I said, you know what, folks? I think it's time you guys all need to leave. Clearly, this lady is done talking to you. She has no interest in speaking to you anymore. And you've outstayed your welcome. Now you guys need to get out of here. And like we talked about earlier, I get this weird feeling. I notice it sounds like the noises of the normal echoes of the store are muffled behind me. And I get that distinct feeling that somebody is watching me. And in a quick moment, I kind of spin around and look out my periphery and that creepy brother is now standing behind me and he's standing behind me so close. I mean, if he leaned forward, he would have been touching me, but his arms are kind of out to the side, like he's about ready to reach up and grab me, like put a bear hug on me. And so I kind of like look to my left 
and he kind of jukes around to my right to where I can't see him. So I spin around real quick and I just said, what the fuck are you doing, dude? Get the fuck out of here. You need to leave. And he looks at me and he's like, uh, I, uh, uh, um, oh, uh, and he kind of like awkwardly like shuffles away back towards the husband and the wife. He could have been running distraction. And that's exactly what I was. I think he was trying to run a distraction or grab me so they could grab these kids. Mm-hmm. Like around my arms or something. And so I'm trying to calm down the mom and kind of give her like, you know, subtle gestures like, hey, it's cool. It's cool. We got this. We're going to be fine. And I finally I look over at the two little boys. And I say, boys, get over here right now. We're going to play a game. Both of you grab a hold of the shopping cart right by your mom. And I want to see which one you could hold on to the shopping cart the longest. The first person to let goes is the loser. And they run over like, hee, 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 okay, okay. And they grab a hold of the cart. And by this time, like, the weird, creepy-ass backwoods trio has disappeared. Because store management is making their way up. So they must have saw them. And so I tell the management uh, what's going on. The mom's crying like she's just up in arms, just breaking down, freaking out. And I pulled one of the managers aside and I was like, hey, like this lady's really panicking. Uh, I don't want to say this in front of her, but I'm pretty sure like those people are trying to steal her kids. And I said, don't look now. But in jewelry, they're hanging out behind a couple uh, display shelves and they're watching us. And then another manager, the other manager walks over and says, well, man, like, do you want to finish your shopping or is there something we can do to help you out? And like, I cut the wife off because she's still like, you know, blubbering because she's so nervous. And I said, no, I think she's done shopping. I think what she wants to do is call the police, call the cops. And so, you know, a few minutes later, the police come barreling in there and making a big commotion like, hey, what's going on? We heard, you know, there's a disturbance. Can you explain what's going on here? Strange. And meanwhile, the creepy ass husband and wife are now sitting on a bench kind of off to the side of my vision center. And I said, oh, well, as a matter of fact, the people we're talking about are right over here. But the brother's nowhere to be seen. He's still lurking around like a shark, like just pacing back and forth in the uh, jewelry department watching this family. So the police walk over and one of the cops says, okay, you know, evening, what's the deal here? What are you guys doing? What did you say to that lady over there to make her so upset? And the family's like, the husband and wife are like, oh, we, we ain't never seen that lady before in our lives. Why, we ain't talked to her ever. And I'm in the back and I hear them say that and I just immediately just haul out. That's bullshit. You can watch the cameras and the cop kind of waves behind him like, hey, shut up. Stay out of this. And so he asked them again and they said, oh, no, we ain't never talked to her. We wouldn't bother her and her good looking family over there. And so the cop says, OK, where's the other guy? There's three of you, aren't there? And the wife says, well, no, it's just me and my husband, just the two of us. And I look over and I see the brother kind of walking off to the side now, kind of walking away. And I was like, nope, that's the brother right over there. So like the second cop kind of makes his way over to follow the brother. And then something is said and the husband and the wife walk out of the store. And then a few minutes later, the brother kind of sneaks out the side of the store and cop comes over to me and he says, okay, so again, tell me exactly what you think this was. And I said, I'm pretty damn sure this was going to be a child abduction. They wanted one of these kids, if not all of them. I I don't know what the deal is, but I mean, it creeped me out and I'm pretty sure like something bad is about to happen. And so I kind of walk over to the side and look out the exit and happen to see this busted up dirty old pickup truck sitting out in the parking lot. And the brother's getting in this old beat-up truck. And wouldn't you know it, the husband and wife are in the front. And so I tell the cop, hey, they're outside. So this cop goes tearing off, running outside, and the truck tries to pull off, and he screams, stop right there. And so I can't hear exactly what the cop says to the family at this point, but I see the, the husband's face get real kind of pickled, like he's real pissed off. And then I hear the cop say, Now get the fuck out of my town. And then the truck, you know, skirt, 
peels off, peels out and drives off. And a uh, cop comes in looking kind of smug. And I said, what the hell did you say to them? And the cop looks at me. He's like, well, I know who they are. They live about an hour outside of El Dorado. Uh, they got a couple, you know, complaints on their records. We we ran their their uh, names. And he said, well, I tell you what, off the record, I told him if I ever caught them in my town again, they'd be leaving with bullet holes in their chests. Damn, gangster. And so that's that's the weirdest thing that ever happened to me, man. Um, the epilogue to the story is that the mother and her husband of the children, sorry, uh, the mom and her husband, um, and I became really good friends. Like anytime they'd come in the store, they'll stop by and say hi and – yeah, you know, every every holiday when I was still working there, they'd come by and give me a hug and, you know, wish my family well and everything. And, um, yeah, for a couple, two, three years after that, I got to keep in touch with them. And real nice family, real sweet family. So, yeah. Anyway, Preston, what's yours? Huh. <laughs> Sorry. God, these questions are I mean, fucking I, so long-winded. I love it. Yeah. I can't really follow up with that. Like, damn. <laughs> that was pretty good. It, it was interesting, man, for sure. I, for I sure. would have to say, uh, for me... You know, I've been in a couple car wrecks where uh, one of them, you know, I didn't have a seatbelt on and um, a car was, I was up on a mountainside and uh, the, the people in my car were trying to pull a Yui because we got lost. And as we were turning around on the mountainside, you know, somebody whipped around the corner like 65, 70 going over the speed limit, fucking T-bone the car and my head mm. went up. And then my whole body went to the side. I ended up having like a bruised skull and, mm. um, you know, they had to pull me out. Um, cause the car, the, the car spun down the highway like three, 400 feet. And when it stopped, um, it was right up against the guardrail and outside of the guardrail was a fucking mountain drop. Like it was, you know, mm. the side of the mountain. So they had to pull me out on a stretcher. That didn't bother me as much as when I was a kid, probably 10, 11, dad had taken mom and I to a Wranglers baseball game and we were, <laughs> we were at the stadium and then, you know, it was July, June, like middle summer. It was fucking hot out and we were up in the stands and dad had just got me like a pretzel with salt and cheese and a pop and. You know, I'm fucking enjoying the baseball game. And this older gentleman, probably 60 or 70, was walking back to his seat. And he walked right in front of us. And he just froze as still as day, just just like a statue. His eyes got all wide. And we're just like looking at him like, what the fuck is going on? Stroke. And he, he, yeah, he, he had a stroke and he fell straight back. And he when he fell... We were on the bottom row, and those are those floors were oh concrete, he and his through. head just his head just split open because um, he fell backwards with you know so much force, oh. and he hit that concrete. So as a kid, like That's I'm brutal. sitting here, I couldn't take my eyes off of it. Like I was genuinely freaked the fuck mm, out. Like did yeah. this guy just die? Like where's his family at? And then you know, dad, fucking tried to be like a medic or whatever, like jumped up and was like giving him like mouth to mouth and like doing his dad thing. And I'm just sitting there like freaking the fuck out. So I think out of all the things back in the, back in the military. Yeah. And that kicked in. Fuck man. So that just kind of, that's always kind of stuck with me because it was just the look of pain on his face, like shock and pain. And then he just fell straight back. Mm -hmm. Like he just lost all mobility. And see, there's something, there's something else in my life that happened and I will not discuss on the podcast, but to me that yeah. moment wasn't scary. It was just more shocking, shocking, depressing type of thing. So that's interesting that that was a scary moment for you, which would make sense because it happened to you at such a young age. Yeah. If that same thing happened to you now, would that be scary or would it just be like, man, that's fucking terrible? Um, I don't, would you still feel scared at that moment? No, I think like, you know, now it'd be more like dad, like I would pop into action mm-hmm. about it. Um, because yeah, yeah, it's weird how our brains do that. Cause like when you're that young and yeah. you never think that's going to happen, but the dude clearly probably had a heat stroke. Right. I would assume. Yeah. 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 We had that oh, same thing brutal, happen man. at pizza hut. Poor, um, poor guy. When I worked at pizza hut back in like Oh five, um, there was a guy that I knew from around town. Um, not the greatest guy really into drugs, really, really ate up. Um, 
from all the drugs he did, plus some unfortunate mental illness. But I remember he came into Pizza Hut one day to order a pizza, and he had it delivered, and then he brought the pizza back in because the pizza was wrong. And he returned the pizza, he gave me a refund, and then uh, this girl named Ashley was taking his order again because apparently like, he ordered the wrong thing but blamed us for giving him the wrong thing. And I still remember, like, he walks up and he's like, what I wanted was a medium hand-tossed mushroom. And then he freezes. His eyes roll in the back of his head and he just went dead weight. Uh, dead weight. He fell backwards, hit his head on the corner of this booth. And then he rolled over and his head hit the tile floor and bounced like a bowling ball. And I can still hear the sound of his head. And it's the, the most disgusting thing. Um. And I mean, I had about enough time to say, we need help. And then in walked an off-duty fireman who walked in right as he had fallen backward. And he pulled out a pair of rubber gloves out of his uh, side pockets of his pants, put them on. He said, everybody back away. Please give me some space. And then he revived the guy. And it was just the most bizarre shit I've seen. And I felt terrible because the guy was a nice guy, just Bad deck of cards got dealt to him and made some bad decisions. Now, in hindsight, I've seen him uh, in the last couple of years. Uh, he's still alive, seems to be doing better. But uh, all right. Presto, you want to read the next one? Yeah. Isaac's uh, third question was, what is your favorite conspiracy theory to rabbit hole? I'll go first. Cool. Um, just lots of them, man. They're all great. The one that interests me the most is 9-11. I won't get into oh, details. Oh, wow. It's very yeah. touchy. Interesting. But, um, okay, it's it, it's always interested me a lot, and it was a very during a very important time in, in all three of our lives. Yeah, you know, especially as young young mm-hmm. adults. So just no, not even adults, young teenagers. God, I so was like, a junior, maybe. Yeah, two thousand one, yeah. so, wasn't it? Yeah, but then like yeah. everything after nine eleven, everything that we've went through, gas prices went up, still happening. You know, what's funny about that is, okay, so you look at this year with the pandemic that, like, when it first hit, how, like, we all... Banded together. I don't want to say we all. Well, no, the, 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 the correlation between the two events, like, w- the thing that sticks out in my mind is a, a mass amount of people, like, freaked out and went out and, you know, bought all the toilet paper off the shelf this year. Yeah, they went and lined up for gas. And that's what I remember on 9-11 is um, as soon as school got out, because my buddy Tim and I, we both had older vehicles. He had a Chevy pickup truck from like, you know, 81, and I had a 75 Monte Carlo. <laughs> <Red> on. <laughs> yeah. And we're like, dude, we got to fill these up because if we don't get gas, like we're, we're not going to be able to go anywhere. And as soon as school got out, we went up to the gas station, which is literally five minutes away from the school and there was a line around the block. We waited there for two or three hours and the price of gas had jumped up to like three or four bucks. And within yeah. like a day or two, like it normalized back down. But that initial panic of everybody going mm-hmm. out and buying gas, that's nice. what kind of reminded me this year of that initial panic and everybody else like, Oh, I, I got to have toilet paper to wipe my ass. And then fuck, I can't bring home toilet yeah. paper now because the shelves well, are me, empty. I mean, that, uh, the toilet paper was kind of odd, but uh, it was more the food pit mm-hmm. than food shortages. This is what was yeah. weird. It reminded well, me toilet of that, paper was because we worried right. about massive shutdowns to where you couldn't leave your house. And outside of food, you really don't want to be yeah. caught without toilet paper. And that's what made me laugh every time someone's <laughs> like, <laughs> you're all going to eat your toilet paper. Is that what's going to keep you fed, you fucking dumbasses? Well, no, like. If you're stuck in your house for four weeks and you can't leave because we do a legitimate shutdown, like, how are you supposed to wipe your ass there, Copernicus? That's what it was. Now, people are dumb and bought way too much, but... Shower head. Just walk outside and shit outside. <laughs> I mean, shower head. Just get in the yeah. shower and wash, leaves. wash that thing off. buying a shower, but I'm buying a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's your guys' conspiracy theory rabbit hole? Alex Jones mess. <laughs> My favorite all-time conspiracy theory to go down is, did we land on the moon? Now, ultimately, Ooh, I fully, nice. Nice. fully, 93% believe we landed on the moon. <laughs> I, I think we landed on the moon. I'm pretty sure we did. But that is my favorite thing to go down rabbit hole wise because the arguments are very compelling. 
Mm -hmm. They're very well thought. Mm -hmm. And to me, they're very interesting. Now, part of that is because. And it involves a lot of cool shit you like. Yeah. Yeah. Stanley Kubrick, all that kind of stuff. And also what what makes this one very rich to go down is uh, we've had how many years now? Excuse me. How many years now to really make some great arguments? I got the hiccup. Sorry. Go back. You know, that's what makes it so rich and so fun is just how long people have had to really, really think about and analyze this and analyze that. But yeah, that's my favorite one, man. Well, that and there's no interest of going back. Yeah, Why? exactly. Exactly. Makes no sense. Yep. Precisely. And that's, then, and yeah. then everything that everything that that whatever country did it first. <laughs> Yeah, would achieve it at that point. Yep. Whether it be space race, financially, yeah. financially, uh, spiritually, yeah, economically, I mean, everything. I mean, yeah. it was it was all in one. It was it the space race was a fucking massive thing. Yep. So the conspiracy theories all in that it's very intertwining. Yep. Preston, what about you? And for me, like on on well on that one, real quick, like for me, um, I like that conspiracy theory just for the simple fact that y- you watch how many years people have analyzed those videos and the the case that they make. So you look at the flat earth theory, right? You can basically poke holes in that all day long. And the minute somebody tries to do this whole spiel and they're like, all right, well, the circumference of the earth and you just, (laughs) you you just pull it apart. Like it's so fucking funny. Like, yeah, how do you, you know, how do you believe in this shit? Because once you start looking at the facts, like you can just, you can just pull it apart. But on that one, yes, when you look at some of the video evidence and like the lighting, the shadows, you know, the the way that the astronauts are moving, the you know, the way that the flag, all that. So my take on that would be, yes, I think we went to the moon, but I also think that because we were under so much Mm -hmm. pressure and then once we got up there, they didn't really know what to expect that they made fake footage and maybe that fake footage is what they saw because what happened if the space shuttle exploded 10 feet away? Like you don't want the whole entire world watching that. So let's just, you know, throw some fake shit on the TV screen. And then if it goes bad, nobody will ever know. Um, But my favorite theory to kind of rabbit hole is the um, polio vaccination with JFK. Uh, there was a book that came out that talked about that there was a doctor, her name was like Mary, I don't know the last name, but she had worked in a biological lab in Boston and they were working on like different vaccinations and the vaccination that they originally created for polio had H116 in it, which is the monkey version of AIDS. But at the time it didn't mutate and didn't affect humans or so they thought. So then the government was like, okay, let's roll this out. And then that first generation of people that got the the polio vaccination, you started to see an increase in cancers. So there's like this mass increase mm. population wise of, of people developing cancers Easy. and other things. And then once the government realized that they could weaponize cancer, they wanted to wipe out Castro and then the whole Cuban Missile <laughs> Crisis. And JFK said, I'm not going to be the president that uses this as a weapon. So then the own American government went in and assassinated him. So that whole big conspiracy theory weaponized you know a virus vaccines cancer oh, jfk easy like, though right now with the situation where the world fucking the world's mind in. blown that's yeah. a dangerous conspiracy yeah. <laughs> we got to be yeah. careful with how we answer these because there are a lot of well i you uh, know i think things. that's safe i don't think preston's running around yeah. saying that the the current vaccine no, situation no. but yeah it's it's interesting to see how that conspiracy there's a lot of people mm-hmm. that link that to this too yeah well sure you know, man yeah because it's, it's 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 fodder it's, for dangerous, it's dangerous and scary. Yeah, uh, on, on for their thinking of that, you know, or anybody's thinking of either. Either I hate saying side, but um, I don't know. It just that's why I was like, I was like, oh, I don't know how to answer this. I don't know how to answer this question because <laughs> it's just conspiracy theories are a, a very hot topic right now, yeah. like on social media. Well, always, dude. Like, you had, just, you just had PizzaGate. Yeah. PizzaGate's my second yeah. runner-up. Um, it's but like back in the day, yeah. that's why I mentioned 9-11, because like back in the day, like that conspiracy theory was um, pretty intense, but it wasn't like harmful. The conspiracy theories that start today 
that that, that are really firing up today, they they're starting to get violent and, and yeah. hurtful. Man, it's For crazy. Sure. Yeah, uh, you know, people like, do your own research and read more than just one website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> please. Um, yeah, but yeah. Great question. It's just it's it's yeah. kind of hard to sure, answer. Yeah. Well, and these things always conspiracy theories to me are interesting, like Pizzagate, because it's something that is just so utterly batshit crazy that that's what makes it almost make sense. You know, that's why people buy into it so much is like, yeah. or there's a nugget of truth. And then the people who are maybe behind it just said, you know what, this fucking full tilt, you gotta go full tilt bozo, man. And, uh, they're the, they're the ultimate. What if sure, yeah. like there's not one conspiracy theory out there that I'm a hundred percent on board with. Like, you know, even the whole thing that I just said, I don't 100 percent believe that, but just that that road that you have to go down and all it's the thoughts, mm-hmm. it's just intriguing. So I, any conspiracy theory for me, you know, I I like all of them, but you getting that ten full doesn't hat, mean boy. that I buy <laughs> right that, doesn't mean that, that I buy into it. And, <laughs> You're fucking crazy. And I think that's the that that would be the dangerous aspect that. You know, so many people, instead of just being intrigued in the whole, like, oh, my God, like, what if Mm -hmm. scenario, like, what if this is true? They go balls to the wall and like, no, this is 100 percent factual. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Calm down over there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's a dangerous part. Well, our penultimate question for the evening from Austin, a.k.a. Neutral Chaos, sorry, Neutral Dot Chaos on Instagram. Mm. Uh, check him out. He does some fantastic artwork. He's a, a killer when it comes to just good old-fashioned pencil drawings, man. Lots of monsters and, and sci-fi and fantasy and horror stuff. So Austin awesome. wants to know, do you believe in the Flatwoods monster? Or do you think that those that saw it were just trying to get a rise out of their community? If you do believe in it, what do you think it is? Now, quick note here. Anybody who's new to the show, please go back. Listen to episode 67, Cryptid Encounters, The Flatwoods Monster. Uh, One of my favorite episodes we've ever done. I mentioned it earlier uh, in the earlier questions. A quick backstory. 1952, September 12th, around 7.15 p.m. in a quiet little town in the hills of West Virginia called The Flatwoods. You got two brothers, Ed and Freddy. With them, a lot of their friends, they're all out playing football. They see something fly across the sky. They get freaked the fuck out. They go to one of the kids' mothers, a woman named Kathleen. Next thing you know, you've got this ragtag group of Eddie, who's 13, Freddie, who's 14, Neil Nunley, Tommy Heiler, Ronnie Shaver, both 10 years old, and this mother named Kathleen, along with a dog named Lemon. One of the boys actually was a National Guardsman. They all go up into the hills to find out what the fuck this fireball was that crashed. When they get there, they find this giant creature, the light illuminated like a man-like creature with a round red face surrounded by a pointed hood-like shape similar to that of a spade. The body's dark green. It's seemingly colorless in spots, but it's got this weird robe-shaped drape over top of it. It's got long, gangly arms monster-like claws and smoke pouring out the bottom. The smoke makes the kids and the woman sick. They start puking, just like the kid describes on Goonies. (laughs) 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 Anyway, they're scared shitless. This thing seems to be floating across the ground. Um, Austin, the Flatwoods Monster is one of my favorite. It is my, if not my, I mean, Mothman is near and dear to me. The Flatwoods Monster is probably my second favorite cryptid, even out doing Bigfoot because of just how fucking batshit crazy it was. My personal thought process, Austin, I fully, fully believe in Flatwoods Monster, and I'll tell you why. In the year of 1952, we are, you know, beginning our 1950 sci-fi's craze. Everybody's hyped up. In that kind of panic, it's almost like the precursor to satanic panic from the 80s. You don't want to be known as the crazy lady. You don't want to be known as the crazy single lady. You know, the crazy Mm -hmm. single mother. You don't want to be kids just running around saying, I seen the monster. I seen the monster. No, I don't think you'd report this shit unless you were dead to rights sure of what you saw and what you experienced. What was it? Right. I have no idea. Uh, Again, do some reading. Listen to the episode because I did a quick paraphrase there. Um, I think the creature itself probably was something tall, 
thin <clears throat> and gangly. The the robe or dress it was wearing, I think, was probably some kind of mini propulsion system because there was a rocket ship involved. I think it had a helmet on because supposed, supposedly the lights, uh, the eyes would light up and shine lights out as well. I think it was some kind of creature wearing some kind of suit uh, to buzz around. That's what I think. Anyway, what do you guys think? I'm on the same page. First off, I've seen the motherfucker in Fallout 76. I killed him. <laughs> I know. Yeah, me too. A couple times. <laughs> me so. too. Yep. Fuck the Flatwoods monster. Yep. He's done. No, I'm just joking. No, I, I don't believe. I, I mean, do I believe? I want to believe. Same thing. Skeptic. Yep. So uh, what I think it is, is I obviously sound something alien. They saw some bright light crash, and this thing came out of it. Uh-huh. uh-huh. I do agree with the suit thing, because the thing looks creepy. It does look like it's wearing a helmet of some sort. Yep. Precisely. But it's definitely one of my favorite cryptids, though. Yeah, the whole story, the it's got, it hits every fucking checkbox for me. I, I love every bit yeah. of that story. The government gets involved. It's alien. It's got a dope suit. Yeah. Well, and Kathleen, and I think some mm-hmm. of the kids went around, and they went to, like, late night shows. They were on the news. Um, they did tours wait, across. Wait, they the- did Colbert? <laughs> oh. They did cross-country tours, man. Like, if this lady was bullshitting, kudos to her, man. You know, I hope you made a few bucks off this thing because they, they put her up in the Ritz. They bought her dinners, all sorts Johnny of shit. Johnny Carson so. here. We got the next one. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Preston, what do you think, man? Flatwoods monster? or I'm in the uh, same boat as you guys. And, yeah. um, you know, primarily because of what you brought up, you have to look at the, at the time frame. And during that time frame, that's something that you're not going to go out and do. Like you're not really going to admit to these things um, mm-hmm. if you didn't experience something. And, and you know, another case that brings that to the to light is the Betty and Barney Hill abduction. So Betty and Barney Hill, interracial couple, during the time that that abduction happened, that's not something where you're going to go public with mm-hmm. if you didn't experience that's something. That's very true. Yeah. So you look at the time frame that we're talking about for all these people to come forward and say, no, I saw something. Do I know what they saw? No, but I believe that the the experience that they had was real and they experienced something out there in the woods. Um, do I know what it is? No, but mm-hmm. I'd like to believe that it's, you know, so, some fucking badass alien in a bio suit. So. <laughs> So there you go, Austin, uh, three out of three team Flatwoods monster. Now, something interesting here. Um, I don't know if you guys saw it. I tagged the podcast in on Facebook. There was actually something kind of bizarre that just happened in Braxton County, um, in the Flatwoods. Apparently I got the video here. I didn't mean to turn the volume on. Um, but there's eyewitness video here from somebody named Harry Kurt Watson, of a fiery object coming downwards towards the ground. Uh, It could be a meteor. They don't really say what it is, but it's an interesting object that's clearly on fire, crashing down to the ground in the Flatwoods area, Braxton County. Um, Check it out. I will probably repost this video. Let me get this off of here so that background noise isn't so apparent. But did you guys watch that video? No. Mm -mm. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> I'll post it from the podcast page so you guys can check it out. But I actually I tagged Austin in that because of the question. Um, and then uh, parting thoughts. I desperately want to go to the Flatwood Monster Museum and the Mothman Museum. Those are on my uh, to-do list for sure. Because those two stories are my favorite. It's every everything you want in a modern-day folklore story. Yeah. If nothing else, I love them too. Dearly, because they are wonderful stories, wonderful, wonderful, you know, local legend, folklore tales. <sighs> All right, Steve, why don't you take us home, buddy? David Jensen wrote in a ton of questions. Cool. So we're into these rapid fire, fast, top of your head. Let's go. Now, do you want to do First each question. person answers each question, or do you want to ask us each the list of questions one by one? We'll do each question and okay. then each person answer. Perfect. Go for I'll, it. But I'll do them. Okay, when and where was your first kiss? Sean, go. Uh, It was in Shayla's parents' driveway. We just finished watching Tarzan, the animated movie, and my first kiss was my wife. Aww. Gangster. Preston. Fuck, I don't even remember, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Hashtag Drew Barrymore. Hashtag never been kissed. Yeah, Yeah, freshman (laughs) year, maybe, eighth grade year, uh, somewhere around that time frame. Nice. 
Mine was while I was in foster care. I uh, lived in a uh, foster home in Little River, Kansas. I was uh, on a bus going to like a church event type thing at Hutchinson. And there was this girl that I had this like crush on and she gave me a kiss. It was my first kiss ever. Oh. And I was like, I think like 13, 12, something like that. Mm-hmm. So pretty cool. Hell yeah. Uh, the nice random question. Uh, next one. If you had to give up one of your senses, which would it be? Smell. I'd give up smell. Smell, smell for me too. There you go. I don't want to lose touch and I don't want to lose sight or hearing. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't see music. <laughs> you can't see music. <laughs> you can't see art. You can't hear music. You can't taste food. Give Take my smell, baby. Yeah. If you become a ghost, would you dick with your co-host? If so, how? Oh, yes. for sure. I would dick with you guys so hard. Yes. First of all, Preston, yeah. I'd steal your vape. I'd constantly move it around the room <laughs> from one place to the other. <laughs> um and then Steven, easy. I'd hang out at your house all the time, and I would turn your TV off during critical points in video games you were playing. Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, that'd be insane. <sighs> God damn it, Sean. Yep. For Sean, um, I would definitely, like, anytime there's something spooky happening in his house, we always hear the story of him whipping out the samurai sword and then trying to go to town. So I think that I would always appear at like the worst time as like a shadow, like a samurai shadow being in his house, just so that it would force him to get out the samurai sword. And then right as he's about to take that swing, I just fucking disappear and then be like, Oh, so close. Uh, okay. I got one uh, for Sean. Wait, did you already do me? Yeah. What would oh, you do to Steve? I don't know how I would, what I would do to Steve. I think that I would just make like his house just like smell like really bad. So like he's constantly, I can't, I I can't get rid of this fucking smell. And like, you just hear Steve all the time with like uh, the fucking like aerosol can like spraying. He's like, I don't know guys. I just can't get rid of it. That's my life right now with my roommate. Oh Oh, no. Just burning up that Nog Champa. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, fair enough. Okay. So for Sean, yes, I would dick with both of them. Of course you would. Why wouldn't we? Um, for Sean, I would go to his vinyl collection and I know he's very particular with keeping like them in their like little protective cases. I would like m- mix them up, like put like the fly in oh, Night of the Living Dead. Dirty so, dick. So, <laughs> he'd, just be so, he'd be so pissed. I know. Well, what's going on here? And like every time, like I would like somehow, okay, first off, I'm a ghost. I can do whatever the fuck I want. I can time travel. So I'll know what he's going to listen to the <laughs> I next can day. time travel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, for Preston, I would um, it'd be the vape. I would glitch out your vape. Aww. So like you'd be like you because I know you like have one that you can adjust the temperatures. Mm-hmm. You'd like go to hit it and it'd be like all up to like 180. Oh you'd my like, god, <laughs> fucking third degree burns in his throat. <laughs> yeah, no, whatever wouldn't hurt him. Obviously, Preston, he'd make you a ghost too. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> can make you ghost. Ultimate. Let's prayer. get our Patrick Swayze on, brother. Yeah, oh, very nice. <laughs> All right, so the next one, uh, how do you tie your shoelaces? Okay, I'll go first uh, this, with my hands. Nice, nice. <laughs> uh, I I'll double knot. Second. I always tie double knots. I'll go second. I wish we could uh, play this audio clip right here where he goes, you you can't tie your shoes? I can't tie your shoes, but I can fuck your bitch. <laughs> <laughs> little kid. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, how do you tie their shoes? I don't know. I don't know that this question's weird. Uh, I, do people tie their shoelaces differently? Uh, some people do. I know yeah. They lace. They lace their shoes differently. Mm-hmm. But ties. I just do the traditional over under bow tie thing. There you, you go. Know? Right. Sure. Preston? Well, I'm a big boy and I wear shit kickers, so I've surpassed having to tie my shoes. So I just slip on the boots and rock and roll, baby. Wow, you're a real fucking super saiyan, aren't you? This is your <laughs> final form. Yes. <laughs> What's next? You're going to wear Crocs exclusively? <laughs> Fuck no. Oh, God. Oh, shit. oh, my God. All right, next question. Coffee or tea? I'll go first. Tea all the way, baby. I love unsweetened tea, and I love half and half mm. with a, a Arnold Palmer style. Preferably diet if you got it. But I love some unsweetened tea, man. It's good. Coffee's good. But only if I'm bound up. TMI, who gives a fuck? 
Mic drop. <laughs> Sean. Uh, coffee, man. I love them both, but. I know you love that coffee, I love man. me a good coffee. I love to I love to try some new stuff. I had a, a blueberry coffee cake the other day, coffee that was delicious. Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I, I only talked about, like, cold tea, hot tea, dude. Mm. All the different blends. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. It's so awesome. I wish I lived in England. Want a <laughs> cup of tea? Absolutely. fucking lutely. Like any everybody just offers tea over there. Like I'm telling you. Oh my I'm god! Just need to move over on, there. on Ted Lasso, on, let's, let's let's run away. Let's go to let's, let's elope to England. <laughs> <laughs> on uh, everybody, you need to try your best to find a way to watch Ted Lasso. It's such a funny show. There's one clip. I won't spoil anything other than this one quick little comment he makes. Somebody makes him a cup of tea and he takes a drink and he's like, mm, "I was always under the impression that uh, tea just tastes like dirty water." And I was right. <laughs> or something to that effect. I laughed so fucking hard. <laughs> Preston. Right, Preston. Tea with lemon. And then if I'm doing hot tea, oolong. Nice. You're, you're a tea lover too. A tea connoisseur. Oh, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that the word? Yeah, connoisseur. I don't want, I don't want Rob fact checking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck him. Uh, great, great questions, man. I love yeah, it. Yeah, uh, who was your yeah. celebrity crush? And does it still hold up? <laughs> mm. Let me flex my uh, let me flex my collar here. Mine, I'll definitely go first. Mine is Drew Barrymore, and absolutely, she still holds up. She's a phenomenal woman. She's intelligent, funny, and beautiful. I love watching her little things on YouTube. I wish I could watch her show, but I don't ever get around to watching any kind of cable shit. Mm-hmm. But she's awesome, and she's still my celebrity crush. Oh damn! All right, Preston. Um. <laughs> I never really had a celebrity crush, but I, I, I will tell you that um, one thing that I'm still amazed at is Jennifer Aniston has never aged a day. She's got to be pushing like 50, right? Like 47, 48. <laughs> it's nuts. She's Not really, really a crush, talented. but more like an appreciation of, wow. Yeah. So she's a celebrity crush. Cool. But you, Sean? Uh, currently, I got to go with uh, Scarlett Johansson. Yep, Scarlett. Old, old Scar Joe, man. That's my uh, celebrity crush. Hell yeah. Cool. So next question. Um, well, I think, it's, I think it's the last question. Last actually. question. Woo. Which historical figure or famous person? Per, Persian. Persian. Which Historical figure or famous Persian. Persian, the which prince. Is, yeah. Which historical figure or famous person is definitely a ghost? Fucking Elvis Jim, Presley, dude. Jim Morrison from The Doors. Hmm. Steve? Prince. Prince. He's too he's too theatrical, man. <laughs> he's gotta be a ghost, bro. He's a good dude. Oh man, that's true. Oh yeah, I, I don't know where, but he's de- he's definitely ghosting somewhere. I yeah. say we, we Jim Morse, Jim Morrison, because if uh, you're you know eating some mushrooms or you're out in the desert munching on some peyote, like he's gonna pop up like a force ghost, like Obi Wan Kenobi, and give you this whole spiel about being the Lizard King. Like I just seen him being like this mystical force ghost, just kind of wandering the desert. What the fuck are you talking are about? Are you on shrooms right now? <laughs> no, if you've never, if you, if uh, you don't know anything was, about Jim Morrison, like that was just spill that he was the Lizard King, and yeah. oh, okay, I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, but, you know who I don't I know like, a lick about, Jim Morrison. I, me, yeah. I me either. I like, I've liked the songs I've heard, but it's something I want to get more into. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, let's dive some more into uh, some singers and stuff like that too. I think Elvis has to be a ghost man because of all the people who claim to see him. Also, if you died on the shitter, like you got unfinished business, you know, like oh. I ain't going out that way. I still got shit to do. So of course you can Bubba Hotep, baby. Bubba Hotep. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Bubba Hotep. They replaced my brain with sand. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great oh. movie. Underrated as fuck. Yeah. My God. That, you, this has been over four hours of recording, everybody. Um, all these questions, all these answers. We just want to say thank you very much for sending these in. Again, I uh, I don't think we were anticipating this many, but we got through all of them. We are very, very, very warm and fuzzy inside and very appreciative of all your guys' interactions and uh, sending these in. Hell yeah. Perfect. All right. Um, Got anything you want to plug? 
Yeah, man, I've been watching Glow on Netflix. That show's phenomenal. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about wrestling at all. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's very 80s-esque. It's got a great soundtrack, great cast of characters. It's in the vein of uh, Orange is the New Black, Women Empowerment. Uh, great great cast of ladies, man. Incredible actresses. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Mark Marin is phenomenal in it. Uh, it's everything I love, man. 80s, uh, cheesy shit, trying to see like how... Uh, how to get established, how pop culture got established, stuff like that. It's really cool. Yeah. So check that show out if you've not seen it. I think there's like three seasons now or something. Um, oh, yeah. Fantastic. I and shout out to fucking Cobra Kai because everybody's watching that by now. So, <laughs> right. That comes out here when? Soon, right? Um, by the time this airs. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. It should be out by now. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I, uh, I finally did it. I joined the club and started watching The Mandalorian. Uh, yeah. Season one was pretty great, and I am uh, I just finished episode four of season two, so I should hopefully have this finished up pretty quick. Nice. And okay, so I just I know we're trying to wrap this up. Question: um, I really want to know. So, like, you don't care about Star Wars as much as anybody else. Like, you're kind of like, oh, I saw the original trilogy, tight, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, how does this vibe with that? Like, does this get you excited? Does does the references and the the puppetry and stuff like that like does it remind you of the nostalgia from what you saw? Yeah, I mean, how does that make you feel? The, the original trilogy, I think, is is it's. And I don't want to go wishy washy back and forth. The original trilogy is great. Um, what they did, what they achieved, especially before they remastered it, is very impressive. I'm a huge fan of puppetry and Jim Henson and all that kind of stuff. So I mm. love practical effects, all that. All that jazz. Um, I know the lore of Star Wars. I've watched all the movies, so I know the story and everything. Mandalorian takes place basically like after everything, right? After, after the Return of the Jedi, before yeah. the new stuff that just came out within the Force Awakens. Yeah, and all okay, that. perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I love, I love the throwbacks and the nods to like, you know, the original trilogy storyline. Um, I think it's it's great. I really enjoy it. Um, it could be something that's not even Star Wars. It can be completely outside of Star Wars, uh, an original story. And I think it'd be, you know, good. The fact that they're doing something like this with Star Wars, um, that's what I like. I like the fact that, uh, to kind of use your phrase, Steve, I feel like it's kind of a Star Wars show for me. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm consuming Star Wars and I'm loving it, but I'm not being you know, beat over the head with Luke Skywalker and, and Ray and uh, blah, blah, this mm-hmm. and blah. It's cool to see like and the shit that happens on the sideline. Like, Oh, what else yes, is happening? Ex- you know, exactly. Which is why I feel I got so giddy over the Netflix Marvel shows. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's exactly. like, okay, Avengers is dope and I love guardians and et cetera, but like fucking these other stories are amazing. Not to mention the side characters of living in a world with that. It's so much more interesting to me. So that's the same with Mandalorian. Not to mention just the the film, the way they filmed these these this show, the way that they inspired by uh, Japanese kung fu, you know, Japanese movies, kung fu movies, mm-hmm. samurai movies, etc. Uh, fucking um, soundtracks killer, the spaghetti western vibe. Like it's just it's so good, and like I'm so glad you're enjoying it because like if you're enjoying it, imagine what it does for people like me, Preston Brady. That like know the lore. Oh and yeah, man, and our buddy Adam, like, like I, and I we go, it. we go so deep into, especially Adam, that motherfucker. He's like, <laughs> he knows everything. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been we messaging him, so, talking about it with him. Yeah, you go so deep into watching that that like you pick up on every single little Easter egg, mm-hmm. and that is so exciting to a fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this will not be a spoiler. I love, I love the reluctant hero, the idea of like. I got shit to do. I've got a mission I'm on, but uh, fine. I'll help you. It's the right thing to do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really, it's really good. Yep. I was a, I was a late bloomer on, on the series and I watched it all within like a week and a half. Yeah. I've, I'm pacing myself trying to just do one or two episodes a day. So I'll have it done before the, uh, the next episode airs, but Preston, got anything to plug, man? No, I was going to say on, I was going to flow into that real quick. I think the, the one thing that I appreciated the most out of it was like when you look at the newer trilogy that just came out, um, from Disney that they didn't really pay attention to the, to the lore 
and you know how things would work within that universe. So when the Mandalorian came out, like one thing when they were in pre-production, like Dave Filoni would say, okay, that's not, that's not correct for this species. Like this is not the type of clothing that they would wear. You know, this is not how they would view this situation. The ultimate nerd. It, I love and it. so he would be like, go fucking rewrite this script or direct this in a new way. So the fact that they, you know, not only are they the perfect team, right? Not only like, are they paying attention to the history, but they're paying attention to, you know, the 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 universe, like the Star Wars universe's rules to their folklore, to their history, to everything else, to where, like, you don't have to retcon anything because they know it so well that mm-hmm. they're making it flow into all the other stories. And I appreciate And then when you – yeah, and when you see, like, how successful that is, like, how big the Mandalorian has been, not just from, like – a stream standpoint being available on Disney plus, but a fucking merchandising po- point. Cause I remember when, you know, force Awakens, last Jedi and, um, rise of Skywalker. Um, you have, you know, your merch and stuff, your toys, nothing will compare to the child. Mm-hmm. Then little puffkins or whatever the hell that stupid shit was from episode eight. That was just clearly <laughs> put in there for marketing. Right. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, you got a rant. Uh, is nothing compared to the baby Yoda. Like it's, it's insane. So anyways, yeah. Thank you for mentioning that show. It's fucking phenomenal. I'm great. I'm so glad you're watching it. Yeah. Yeah. I really dig it. I dig it. Well, listen guys. And then, uh, also, uh, everybody keep your eyes and ears open. February 19th. Amigo. The devil has a new album dropping. Oh, we're super stoked about that. Yeah. I hope, uh, Gillum, That's I hope not. you heard that buddy. February 19th. Pretty stoked about that. Cool. All right. Well, Preston, you got anything else for us? Yes. If you need a beard, if you want a beard, if you want to grow a beard that will stand the test of time or be the next big thing like the Mandalorian or outshine <laughs> Jennifer Aniston's legs, check out BigDobsBeardBomb.com <laughs> and use promo code PXLPARA for 20% off your order and use that code to get yourself some scents like Dundee Cedar, Bay Rum, Sweet Tobacco, Fresh Citrus, Mint, and Classic. Cool. Sounds good. Also, if you're in the Wichita area, please stop by CD Trade Post at Pawnee and Seneca. Stop on by and say hi to our friend Leslie and the gang down there and get yourself something fun to watch or to play or to listen to. All right. With that, again, guys, Happy New Year. Welcome to 2021. Let's hope it's a fuck lot better. And until we meet again, cheers to the weird shit in the world and those of us that love to talk about it. And stay spooky and stay on the paranormal highway. The cast at Pixelated Paranormal would like to thank you for listening to this week's episode. Pixelated Paranormal is here to tell you tales of the fantastical, the strange, the unknown. Tales that will move you a little further down the paranormal highway. If you'd like to share your own listener story, we would love to hear it. Email us at pixelatedparanormal at gmail.com. Again, that's pixelatedparanormal at gmail.com. We'd really love to hear from you. Again, thanks for listening to this week's episode of Pixelated Paranormal, your guide to the unusual and the strange.